My profession is a psychologist and I train uh, between 20 to 25 hours a week. I'm a mother, train anywhere from 8 to 20 hours a week. Commercial real estate agents, 15, 16 hours. Small business owner, 20 to 25 hours a week. I'm a retired home builder, 20 hours a week. Registered nurse, 15, 16 hours. Professional triathlete, 35 hours a week. That's pretty much all I do. Champions aren't born. Champions are made. Will. Determination. Greatness. Tear. Get made. It all started 25 years ago with a sewing machine, a cyclist, a fashion student, and a simple idea to build a better bike short. And from these humble beginnings, Savoy was born. While our garments have evolved, our core philosophy remains the same. We ride, we run, we make the gear that we want to wear. We're passionate about creating the best product for athletes by athletes. Grew up in a family of 15, where we didn't have a whole lot of money, but we had a tremendous amount of help from communities and the people around us. There was just something that told me that I did not receive those gifts just strictly to keep them myself, but to actually to give back to people that were in the same position my family was as we grew up. Social responsibility is not something that's separate from the business. Everything is interwoven. So there is no separation. We live it every day, literally. It's great to see that they're now a B Corporation because um, it recognises that it's more than a shoe company, it cares about the community too. One of the things we say around here is we live this stuff and that not only means do we live it by competing in races but also in giving back and making sure that we give back more than we take in the world in which we live. My dad used to say, champions are made when no one is watching. Momentum. The power to keep pushing. The discomfort zone. That's what I'm building with chocolate milk. What are you building? Nutrients to refuel, protein to rebuild, backed by science. Hi, I'm Leander Cave, and you're watching Ironman Live. Sponsors of today's race are Power Bar Perform, the official sports drink of Ironman. Active, the official online registration partner of Ironman. Tax, the official cycle mounting partner of Ironman. Newton, the official run course sponsor. And Ironmanstore.com, official Ironman merchandise with free shipping on orders over $100. I'm saying if she. Okay, guys, yeah, we're back here. Like nice and smooth. I think she looks great. And once again, folks at home, you are joining us for the 2014 Ironman World Championships presented by GoPro. Let's get excited. This is it, the Newton Run Course. We are watching Daniela Reef. She's leading this race. She's been leading it for a long time. She's on the run course. And she's rolled her um, uh, tri suit up. She's exposed the, the skin, which I think, again, is a brilliant thing. I think it's brilliant. You get less fabric on. You like it's exposure. 
I like exposure. Thank you, Matt. And I appreciate you sharing that with my viewers. It's not a family show anymore. Um, it doesn't stay up. That's the only problem. But I like that she's got, you know, the socks. I, I sort of disagree with a little bit too much fabric. For my, that's just me. For me, looking at her form, she looks good. She's got a relaxed arm uh, carriage. She's got a little bit, almost 90 degree. Maybe she'd be a little tighter theoretically. But I think it relaxes her muscles. She's running, I think, the way she runs. Sure. I mean, it's hard to look at. It's hard to break somebody's form apart when they're uh, this far into a, a marathon and an Ironman, right? And, you know, there's perfect running form, but rarely do we see it. You know, I think of uh, Peter Robertson. That guy always had his ear touching one of his shoulders when he was running away from everybody in the field, right? So, so um, but well, well, here's the thing. This yeah. is Daniel. This is Daniel Reed's first time here. Yeah. Um, people knew about her though, because she'd won in Worlds 70.3 just five weeks ago. We, you know, we wanted to talk to some of the other competitors, some of our contenders. Last year's second place, Rachel Joyce, she gave us her thoughts on Daniela Reef. Let's hear what she had to say. Yeah. Daniela's had a stellar career racing ITU, so it's uh, not completely unexpected. She didn't come from nowhere, and I think the way she's um, stepped up to the long distance is really impressive. I mean, the way she pulled away in um, the Ironman 70.3 World Champs on the bike, on the back end of the bike, was it showed that she's going to be, she's going to be up there. You know, she she's got to go in um, as as one of the favourites, and I'm sure she's got her eyes on the top spot for sure. Great. That's Rachel Joyce for you. You know, she was second place here last year. She was the, uh, um, sorry, we're actually showing Daniela Reef's uh, player card. So that's the 70.3, a current world champion. She won Ironman Switzerland. She won the European Ironman yeah. Championship at Wiesbaden in 70.3 distance. She's wearing bib 112 from Switzerland. As you know, back to her, live on the course, this gal is lighting it up. She looks great. She looks comfortable in the lead. A lot of people have that panic face. I don't think she has that panic face. Yeah. Um, you know, she's exposing. She's not trying to hide her eyes. She's um, she's got her glasses up on her head. Yeah. No, it's she, all good. She's in control. You know, she's in control. She knows what she needs to do. She's moving smooth, and uh, you know, she knows she has a sizable gap to the main part of her competition. Um, Rachel Joyce a little bit closer, but you know, I want to say Rachel Joyce at this point probably running a little bit more comfortable than she did last year. It's always a little bit easier on the head to be chasing. Uh, you don't have to think so much about pressure, but uh, she's in a great spot. And, you know, right now we have back with us in studio from Training Peaks, AJ Johnson, uh, with some more information. Do you have any more uh, updates on, you know, maybe some of the women's numbers off of the bike? Yeah, we do. This year uh, we got quite a few more women's files than in the past, which is great. Awesome. Um, Mary Beth Ellis, uh, pretty strong numbers, 213 normalized watts. Puts her, um, you know, from what we've got, about 3.9 watts per kg. Wow. That's really high. That's really high. Um, so we'll see how that may or may not affect her. Yeah. One thing you notice also, 88 RPMs. Typically in the past, we've noticed a lot of women tend to have a lower cadence. Uh, one of the other women we have, Caroline Steffen, Zena, she was coming in at about 79 RPMs, which is what we see in the past. Uh, Meredith Kessler, same thing. She's usually in the high 70s. Um, but, yeah, it, it's, it's phenomenal what these women are, are doing out here on a day like today. Awesome. And, you know, you used those uh, watts per kilo numbers before. Good. What's the difference? We know that uh, women in general can't push quite as much weight right. watts per kilo. What's the expected difference between that? That doesn't mean that the men are riding better. It's just what they're right. capable of doing, right? right? Typically, you know, it's anywhere between, I mean, if you're, if you're going to do pros to pros, yeah. you yeah. know, you're looking at 0 0.2 to 0.3 watts per kg, you know, yeah. across equal athletes. So, um, and I'll tell you this, the women are getting stronger and stronger, yeah. and it's, it's really impressive. And, you know, with all the files, with all the data we have, anybody, if you're interested in looking at the files yourself, you can go to the IronmanLive.com or Training Peaks Twitter. We're putting these files out, so you can actually interact with them yourself yeah. um, and see all, how, you know, like I said, all these, data, all these athletes are using the data to set a plan and execute. Yeah, and I mean, I think it's important to note, though, if you look at, like, I think Ben Hoffman was right around 3.9, right? Right, right. And, and the, to say that Mary Beth Ellis right. did 3.9, that is substantially right. higher effort than what Ben uh, did. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, it is, it's the best thing we can do for um, apples to apples, of course, you know, drag and all that sure. stuff does come into play. But um, And the athlete saying their actual weight. Right, that's that's true. You're <laughs> always dependent on... You can, <laughs> I mean, it's on, true. No, you. You can, I you always go a little light on mine. You know? <laughs> There's always a way to fudge your watts per kg. Uh, I wouldn't <laughs> recommend it. Yeah, it doesn't you know, help you. you. Want, usually the data is only as good as it is, you know, how correct it is. But, you know, 
That's true. But you know what? The <laughs> cool thing is those numbers, they come up later, and they're really good for assessing what you did right and wrong. Yeah, absolutely. I, someone mentioned Ben Hoffman. By the way, he's in third place right now. Crazy. So Crazy. Ben Hoffman fans, if you're out there, this guy's so just good. taking third place. Uh, he's not that far behind <laughs> second. So really cool dream come true for this guy executing a day we knew he was, yeah. you know, capable. We just know he was ready for it today. And you think I'm setting it up to put attention on myself and my family, but when is the last time we had an American in running in podium position in this race? It, it's been a while. Top three, yeah, it's been since 2001. Thanks very much. Good 2009. Point. 2009. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, so as we look here, we've got Daniela Reef again in first place. You know, she's now pulling that jersey completely off. And you know what? Sponsors, beware. I'm done with that. that I'm awesome. going just with the, you know, the jog bra. See, and why not? Because this is what she wants to run in. So we figured out exactly why she was fidgeting. Too hot, too oppre you know, oppressive with that garment. Get it off. But what does that say for an athlete? We know it's her first time at this race. Does that I mean if she planned to run in this top, she would have had this top when she came out of transition? Does that mean she's feeling like this is hotter than she ever thought it could be? No, or she what? she's probably she probably gave herself that plan. She probably is wearing a branded jog bra on purpose. Now she's putting ice. She's actually grabbing. She's got her fuel down there. She she wore a branded sponsor logo jog bra. It's not like it's just her backup. Yeah. Y you probably are. Right, like she probably is like, oh crap, I'm already there. I got to ditch this. Yeah, okay, gotcha. Um, but yeah. she did the smart thing. It was not a rookie move to ditch that yeah, in no, no, no. transition. Very, or sorry, in aid station. Very important. She threw it into the trash. Yeah, she, she will get a penalty if you just throw it on the side of the course. The abandonment yep. of equipment. So she's. I, I like what she's done. Again, you know, I'm going away from love, folks. I'm going for like. I like what she's done. Managing <laughs> that temperature is what it's all about. It's really hot in here. It's really humid understatement but yeah. what she's doing is she's just assessing all the time and that's what it comes down to when you're a rookie yeah. at Ironman sometimes you don't realize problem solving is part of the game right oh that's well, that's the deal yeah and she's not a rookie uh, competitor right. not she, at all she, not really. she you know I'm like I agree that I think she had that as an option and she was ready for it. She obviously, she knew she had to discard it at uh, an aid station. Yes. So I think she was ready for that, and uh, she's she's a smart competitor. Awesome. For sure, AJ. And you know what, the thing is, it, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting thing in our sport to be able to be an accomplished athlete with an incredible resume and come in as a rookie at any event, but uh, that's what's happening. I mean, yeah. you've got the pedigree, you've got the ability. So good point, AJ, she's no, uh, She's no stranger to high-level competition, which is seventh place in the Olympics, right. I think, in 2012. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah, she's pretty good. <laughs> I'd take that. I would have <laughs> taken that. Um, as we look again, you've seen some of our age group athletes going out. Uh, we haven't got a super good look uh, to the women on the other side of the road, but we have seen some of them go by. I saw a Saucony athlete, which easily could have been Mary Beth Kessler. I'm sorry. You're okay. Meredith take Kessler time. or take even Lindsay Corbin. We know she's Ooh. out there already. Heather, Wirt Heather Wirtel is in between those two Heather athletes Wirtel as well. Also. Yeah. So these athletes are all on course. Um, a couple more, uh, a couple more miles for Daniela. Here she's approaching that uh, Kona Bali Kai. We said yep. that was about five kilometers out. So she's got you know two and a half, almost three miles before she comes back in um, and hits Polani to climb up to the highway. Yeah. Again. So yeah, I'm sorry. I'll let so, you go. Yeah, so we're, where she is right now, we just got a few updates from our vloggers up on Iron Man Live with Kevin McKinnon. Uh, Daniela obviously still in the lead, but Rachel Joyce now just a minute and 44 seconds behind. Mary Beth Ellis, 420 behind. Jody Swallow, 520 behind. Uh, Carolyn Stevens, 723. Marinda Carfrey has now made up one minute and 34 seconds on Daniela. So she is 13 minutes and six seconds back, just passing Heather Rattel, not not long uh, ago with Meredith Kessler behind her. Uh, Liz Blashford riding out the top 10 with Julia Gajer right in front of her. So, you know, there's uh, some splits are coming down, but she's holding her own. But 144 to uh, Rachel Joyce at this point as we have a shot of her yeah. on the right side of our screen. A uh, great overhead shot of our men's leader right now, Sebastian Keenly, really still in great control as we see him go over Himilani Avenue right there. Yeah, good stuff and good, good call on the location. So we just uh, did some number crunching and we saw that um, our last split that we have online was showing 9-11 from Sebastian to Frederick. He's now got it to 8.50. Freddie's coming. He's coming hard. So he's only closed 20 seconds. But yeah. remember, as it starts to piece together in the second half of this race, that could amount to a lot. Um, on the women's side, uh, we were just, you read those splits. I happen to remember that Daniela left at two minutes ahead of Rachel yep. from the exit of transition. <coughs> it's now 144. 
15 seconds in approximately six, seven miles of running. Two seconds a mile, negligible now, but let's see. You know, two, four seconds a mile amounts to a lot as yeah, and, we progress. And Marinda Carfrey up closer to 15, 20 seconds a mile on, on both of those athletes, more or less, right? So Marinda's coming well, but, you know, she made, Marinda made a strong push the second half of the marathon, uh, but she, you know, she, she looks good now. She's going smooth. Um, but uh, AJ, is there any more info that you had, you know, from, you know, the information you were able to get off, off the course that maybe is something we wouldn't expect in a race like today? Um... You know, actually, not particularly. It's yeah. amazing that, that, like I said, these athletes, they have a plan and they execute it. And that's what, that's what having that data, the power meter right in front of them, um, it allows them to ride to the best of their capability on the bike and yeah. still be able to run. I, you know, every one of these athletes, uh, professional and age groupers, could probably ride the bike faster than sure. they currently do, right? Sure. But it's how fast can you go and still have a solid run? And that's really the key um, we see. Yeah. So, yeah, there's really not a huge surprises on race day. Well, there shouldn't be, good. right? right. There right. shouldn't be. And if there is a surprise, it's maybe how hard they went when they knew they shouldn't have and they right. blew up, right? Like, that, it always ends up being what we thought it was going to be. Right. You know, I mean, 2000, I think it was 2012, you know, Luke McKenzie did not pace the bike very well. Yeah. And, you know, the data showed that. And okay. obviously, his placing showed that. Yeah. 2013, he comes back, learns from that, and boom, nails it, comes into a second place. So. Yeah. Um, you know, the few times that you do see, uh, you know, if you want to call it a mistake or someone not execute as well, yeah. they, that athlete usually comes back with a better plan and executes amazingly. And, um, you know, it, again, it, it comes down to the run. And I th uh, particularly, I think it comes down to the back half of the run. Yeah. You know, you, you guys may be closing two or four seconds a mile now, but let's see what happens at mile 16, mile 20, when, you know, it, it, any mistake that you've made early on, gets compounded as you go. Oh, right? for sure. And these are the best athletes in the world, yep. and they've been training all year for this, and they can hang on right. for half a marathon no matter how hard it is in the well, body. Right. And, and the other thing is this is the world championships, right? So these athletes, they're going to take a risk. You know, they, they need to take a risk. Uh, who do we have here? That's number 35. Okay, so we're just saying Christian that we I know Christian we all Kramer. thought that was Sebastian. He had a similar, <laughs> similar colors when we saw that at the corner of our head, but it certainly isn't, but that's Christian K Kramer. So we just got inf interesting information just breaking down the splits. You guys may see this at home, but right now through mile 10, Andy Rayler has the <laughs> fastest per mile average, 558 per mile for 10 miles. A lot of guys, I say, slow it down, but not for this guy. He really knows what he's doing, and he can really run, run, run. So... Excuse me, I will say that Andy Raylard is showing his old self back on course, already in sixth place, not afraid to throw down the gauntlet. This guy can come at you, and he's doing it. Yeah, and the years that he's gotten on the podium, he's usually run pretty hard in the beginning and held on for a you know, podium result. And if he's paced himself uh, correctly, he could you know, go, the way, go all the, the way to the front for the sure. The time that he lost got second to Pete Jacobs. Yeah. He had a bad swim yeah. and had to go murder his pace on the yeah. bike, murder his pace yeah. on the run to get a Crazy. second. He was just so far back. We will have his power file up shortly. Awesome, awesome, good stuff. And as we said, you know, all, a lot of this footage brought to you by GoPro. That you know, this uh, race is being supported by some great partners. Right now, we're going to go to GoPro with uh, Ricky James. A little bit about the cameras. two back surgeries that kind of hurts and race chair is horrible on my back I'm like I don't like it but you just have to overcome it at the end of a 2.4 mile swim and 112 mile bike then you go run a marathon how good is that gonna feel it's not the competitor you have to beat yourself that day everyone knows actions speak louder than words and I just want to Show the motivation. Back to the women here. Welcome back to the Ironman World Championship presented by GoPro. We are here looking at our first time competitor here, Daniela Reef out of Switzerland. She won our Ironman 70.3 World Championship five weeks ago in Montremblant. The girl's on fire. They're saying that, everyone's saying that. Reif, she's on fire. And right now she's leading this race, uh, cresting a little bit of a hill here. We know that's about two miles out. Um, she comes down the hill. We recognize this terrain very well. She's going to come down this hill, hit that hot zone we talked about earlier, uh, in and out around uh, Lava Java. And then she will be on her way uh, again 
we know this course. We know she's tackling it well. We know she's ready. What do you think, Matt? Yeah, no, she's ready. She's uh, in a good spot, but she's she's going to be experiencing all these parts of the course for the first time in a race situation, right? So that part we were talking about when Sebastian hit it, that Polani section is a very, very difficult part of the course. Uh, she's not far from there, but no, she absolutely is having a great race. You know, as a rookie, to to lead the world championship has to be. It, it's not good enough for her. She wants to win, but that's an incredible place to be in, and she looks in control. And, uh, you know, all things at this point are going to plan, it seems, uh, for Daniela Reef. For sure. And you know what? There is a little bit of a uh, benefit of just sort of ignorance is bliss. You know, like getting in here and not knowing how bad Polani is. There's no expectations. You're not ever dreading it. So I think once you start to do this race too many times, you yeah, dread, no, for sure. you, know, you dread slash respect too much, uh, too many parts too much. And so right now, Daniela, she's in that um, that calm sort of before the storm, the unknown. Uh, but anyway, she's coming down the hill. She looks good to me. I, I don't think there's been a lot of change in what she's been doing. Obviously, she ripped the top off. Welchie is coming back at us, and Welchie didn't maybe know that, but uh, Daniela Reef was uh, ripped her top off. And she's, um, I know, I hate to have uh, had you miss that, but <laughs> she took her top off, and she's just in the sports bra now. Uh, again, we calculated that she had that intended because she's got a branded sports top, and she looks good, and she's still, uh, I mean, she looks great to me. Yeah, she looks awesome. She looks uh, she looks great, and she's she's put, um, you know, Marina Carfrey looks at this point, I'm just getting updates, sorry, that uh, Marina Carfrey has put about 30 seconds per mile in on reef um i you uh, the last two miles it was 25 yeah. seconds per mile yeah, so, so uh yeah so she's she's back in the race you know uh marinda but she's still 12 and a bit minutes down on our leader right now daniela reef from switzerland so you know daniela look at this running style it's just absolutely beautiful i mean it's a beautiful turnover and you know as you would expect that from the coach that she has and uh you know, Brett Sutton's done a wonderful job of, you know, just creating a, a beautiful turnover for all of his athletes through, throughout all the years. And, and here it goes again. We can see that Daniela now, yes, yeah, she's on the way downhill uh, from the Sea Village Condominiums as she's about one and a half miles from downtown Kona. And then she'll get up to the top of Polani. And don't forget that the uh, big ring bike insurance premium is coming up or bonus is coming up for our women at this stage too. So uh, a little bit of a hair adjustment. There we go. Back into a ponytail. <laughs> what am I going to do? Am I'm I going to leave Really, she's like really taking care of things out on the run course. She's well, making she sure really she's has. keeping it all she's together. Uh, like making it. sure that she's comfortable, and that yeah. is number one. It Being is. Comfortable. It really is. Yeah, but you know what? It's funny because typically I see an athlete with so much fidgeting, so much fussing, um, it's a bad sign. With her, I gather, you know what? She's still so much in control. Yeah. She just wants everything just right. She and needs so something to do. <laughs> so it looks like that's what that's what you would be doing. You'd yeah. be brushing up, Matt, and making sure you look good. And Mike would be putting his hair back up in the fro. Oh, there's a yeah. ponytail back in the day from uh, this guy, right? I, I always been? had that tightly managed. So <laughs> as we look <laughs> to <laughs> Daniela Reef, um, so interestingly, again, we see her. Um, I, I like to see this. Just keep an eye, folks, at home on that left. Uh, left hand, okay, Le her left arm or left hand, a lot more movement there, so that's your point. Check that. If you see that, I think, dropping a lot more than it does now later, going that higher. might be yeah, her thing. Sure. So right now, it's the same. She's got a, a little bit more arm movement, arm swing. I love that. So I've said it before, I'll say it again, where the feet, you know, where the arms go, the feet follow. If your legs are tired, but you can swing those arms, it keeps the turnover going. Turnover going is a very good thing. Well, and a um, little, little update I've uh, just gotten from the guys up at, uh, with Kevin Kevin McKinnon and that crew uh, on the women's race. Danielle Reef has put more time into Rachel Joyce. So Rachel Joyce now two minutes, 10 seconds up uh, or behind, excuse me, Daniela. And behind her, Mary Beth Ellis is 525 behind the lead, but Jody Swallow just two seconds behind her. So those two athletes that train together and have uh, spent some time racing together are about to link up, and that's your podium position. They could so make a pretty good gap there. So what is it with Freddie Van Leert and the Queen K Highway? Jeez. Because He's last cruising, year, yeah. this is where he took out all the time on Luke McKenzie and uh, also Sebastian Kinley, and this year it's happening again. Now, over the last three miles, from mile 10 to mile 13, it's 11 seconds per mile that wow. he's taking out of Kinley now. So, uh, you know, given those times, you know, Freddie's uh, just rock solid like last year. He's having exactly the same race. So we know what's coming up for Freddie. He's not going to buckle. There is no failing for the Belgian for our 2013 defending Ironman world champion, 
uh, you know, presented by GoPro here. And I tell you what, Freddie's looking pretty good, and Sebastian Kinle is still out there running nicely, but he's losing 11 seconds per mile now. He's used, he's losing 11 seconds, but still at this point he has eight and a half minutes left, right? So he he definitely definitely has a sizable gap that he can play with a little bit. Once that gets closer to 30 and 40 seconds a mile, that's when we're going to start seeing trouble. But you're right, Frederick is so good on the highway. Well, what we just saw, I mean, that footage, we're a little bit removed from right now, but that footage of the man with the fluorescent shoes, that was a very short stride length. And so I've been saying a lot of guys look good. I will tell you when they look bad, and that did not look good. <laughs> I mean, I saw that shot stride length shorten way up. It looked like he was going up Polani again. He's out there on the highway. There's rollers, but if we can, when we get back in and we view this man up close, I did not like the way Sebastian looked on that one. I'm sorry, Kinley fans, I want to see him pull this together, but that stride length when it goes that tight something's going on yeah well i mean let's face it you know uh sebastian you know during the week here uh, he's been spotted at the pool doing a lot of pool running so we know he went into this thing injured and he's given it every bit that he can and that's why he probably ran out as hard as he did to bank a little bit of time but he's not going to give up without a fight. Kinlay is just slowing down a little bit. Freddie Van Leer now is on his way, you know, up onto the, you know, into, into sight of, uh, yeah. of Kinlay now. Once he sees Kinlay, and if he sees any, any, any sign of trouble, that's going to give him an extra boost. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, and, and you, as you said, uh, Frederick is, uh, you know, he's, he, he knows that that's kind of his zone there. So he, he feels comfortable. As much as we said earlier, Sebastian knew that, you know, that's an area he can train in and, and do well. Uh, Frederick knows that's his zone, but right now we're back. And uh, then we got Sebastian Keenly. Still looks smooth from this point. It's hard to tell so much oh, yeah. from behind, Take but his, his, his heel kick looks good. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I think he looks good. He's moving well. His stride is uh, quick. He yeah. has slow down. And, you know, there's a couple kickers in there, but, you know, sometimes we get uh, a different view from uh, the helicopter up above. It makes yeah, things look what. like they're standing still, but he looks good. And uh, Michael, uh, he doesn't have fluorescent yeah, shoes. Exactly. So, <laughs> so that must have been Freddie. It might it have was, been Freddie. That stride it, length I was looking at. So it, it, it was Freddie. But Freddie, yeah, but Freddie doesn't have – he's a tall guy, but he doesn't have a long stride length. Sure. He's got a short stride, but he's got a very, very quick turnover, which is, uh, which is something that Freddie prides himself on. Turning right here into the Energy yep. Lab right now, folks, this uh, is a this spot is that you got to love it. because you're going down into the into the Energy Lab. There's a breeze finally in so your good. face. People say, hey, it's hot. It's not hot right now. It's hot when you turn around. <laughs> right it's, now, it's, it's not beautiful. As hot. You're going downhill. It's about a mile plus down, down. You turn right, and then you get to a little bit of an inferno again. But right now, it's a really nice spot where the breeze is hitting you. Last chance for aid for a while. Sebastian continues grabbing everything that comes his way. The guy looks in control, and whatever I saw from the cam from the hello, not quite right. Yeah, yeah. no, he looks good, but as you said, Energy Lab, you know, things things change in there for some reason. No, no matter how confident and good some athletes go in there, they always come out bad. I know, you know, a few athletes come to mind, but right now, Sebastian, he looks good, but as you said, he's going to have a little bit of a breeze in his face. It's going to make him feel cool. Right now, he can open up his stride. He's running downhill. Everything feels a little bit easier, if anything can feel easy at this stage of a race, but there's something about this section of road that just tears you apart. It has a lot to do with the fact that you're at 15 and a half miles. Yeah, or 25 <laughs> <day of> running. <laughs> it really yeah, does, maybe, so that's maybe. a breaking much natural point of 90 minutes of running it, it hurts no, so but even i think Ferdino, uh he said on social media a couple weeks ago he did his last hard long hard run in there and uh he it hurt you know and there's something about that section of pavement and the conditions in there that no matter how fresh you are can absolutely crack you but yeah. man, he's, he's back at it he looks good he looks well, smooth this is also the point of the course where there's not much wind down there as uh you know daniel reef is uh now making a way back into town. You can see how many people are out on the course today. Just absolutely wonderful to see so many people out today giving encouragement and uh, learning all the support. Sebastian Kinley, however, he's at the 16 mile mark at the moment as he's making his way down into the energy lab. Now he's only got 1.1 miles down to the corner, 1.1 out. So he's got, you know, 2.2, so 4.4 miles inside of the energy lab. Once he gets back to the top of the uh, Queen K Highway, he's only got six and a half miles to go. So Kinley right now, if he can get himself in and out of the energy lab as quick as he possibly can without losing too much time to Freddie Van Leader, you'd have to say that he's either got this race or it's his race to really lose. Yes, for sure. And look into the women. We've got Daniela Reeve. She's coming up on a really nice section of road here. Uh, that we like to call, well, this is Walla Lai, so she's coming in. Eventually, she's going to 
the approaching the big ring insurance bonus, run bonus. So she's coming up on that, and we'd love to see her come across that line. But right now she's on Hualalai, coming pra about to come past the library. This is the old hot corner from the old course. Uh, so she's coming in there now. Obviously, athletes return to this in quite a while, here in about uh, 13, 14 miles for her. But right now, she's coming up a slight grade, going to turn left on the Kuakini, and then she's got half a mile before she approaches um, Kalani Hill, where our big ring insurance run bonus is. Yeah, no, definitely, uh, you know, she'll feel a little bit better when she uh, has uh, a little bit more money in her pocket out of that run frame. And, you know, I don't know, <laughs> guys, it feels like we might have a little bit of a sprinkle coming down right now. Um, you know, some parts of the court. You love your sprinkles, Matt. I think it's going to do, you know, a lot for the athletes. It's going to cool them down at least. It's been uh, pretty humid here this afternoon. So yesterday afternoon we had a couple of sprinkles, like you say, and, uh, and today we might get it again. So anyway... Sharknado, mate. She's going to be going really quick here pretty soon. Did you just say Sharknado? Yeah, well, what's wrong with that? <laughs> I don't know. I just, it wasn't I just think it's like, economy. you know, Marinda, Australia, Shark, Tornado. She's just going to be no, that's tearing good. it up the here Angry pretty Bird, soon. The Angry Bird Sharknado. I like it. But, no, she she looks good. She looks smooth. And, and she is in control. And being in, in the lead of a race like this uh, can definitely take some pressure off or put it on, depending on the, the tenacity of the athlete. And I think she's... You know, she's ready to go. She's ready to push. But it did appear that she was getting pretty pretty warm, pretty hot down at the end of Lee Drive. So we'll see how, you know, going up Polani affects her and what it feels like when she gets up on the highway. It might cool her down a little bit. And as you said, maybe those sprinkles will help cool her down. But Sebastian Keenly, we saw for a second on the, the left side of our screen, and he looked, uh, he looked smooth and good as he's been. Sure, as he's been looking all day long. And um, Daniela, again, it, it's that same look, glasses up. Arm swings the same, you know, movement is good, uh, nice turnover. She's going to hit this section road. It's, it's fun to just speculate on what happens to her when she hits that the first time. Again, what's, what's going on there? That's a lot of fidgeting. That's the kind of fidgeting I don't like. Why are you brushing your arms off? Are you, are you trying to get clean? I mean, yeah, I it's think just a nervous energy, I think, and you're coping with something. I think it is. I think it, I think it could be. It, it seems like a heat thing. You know, when, the, when it's, it's so muggy, it can be so muggy on a Lee E drive. She's just probably covered in sweat, and she's wiping it off. And, you know, she's trying to, to try new things and change the situation to maybe, you know, get a little bit of relief, uh, you know, in her body and in her legs. And But right now, you know, she looks smooth. As you said, she goes from looking great and looking smooth to do these fidgeting but it seems like after the fidgeting she goes down and focuses for a period of time and then gets right back to work okay so it's reef leading uh from switzerland right now she's leading from great britain rachel joyce mary beth ellis from the usa jody swallow in fourth place caroline stephan in fifth place 644 down and then the flying marinda carfrey from australia 1131 so she's put another 20 seconds per mile over the last two miles on the girls right now. And that was a split through 7.26 miles. So Marinda Carfrey is at 11.31 down, followed by Julia Greyer, uh, Geja from uh, Germany at the moment. So that's your top seven women going through the 7.26 mile mark. As we now get to see Daniela Reef from Switzerland here, she's gonna make that right hand turn onto Polani Drive. And here she goes, Polani Road, however. Uh, and uh, just making that right hand turn up the hill for the big ring bike bonus. Uh, this will be the run bonus, sorry, uh, today, but it is the big ring bike insurance run bonus, $1,500. Yep, have to buy us, us a, That's buy, right. buy us a drink and buy you a coffee. Well, that'd be a treat. <laughs> he likes morning, a fancy I'll need coffee. That. Um, but, so, again, let's remember that this gal trains in Cozumel, and I bring that up because yeah. Cozumel is extraordinarily impressive humidity. Okay. The temperatures are lower than here, and so I think this is, again, something that really suits her. I keep picking apart everything because that's our job, I think, to talk about the race, but I'm still seeing an extremely strong and extremely um, just capable and, and, and great <laughs> athlete here, really. Is yeah. what I see. I'll tell you, I see weakness right now. She's hitting Polani. She's getting after it. Big ring insurance run bonus coming at her, but uh, she's not there yet. Yeah, and as you said, this is a place where we can see, you know, really how how deep into the tank have the athletes gone. You know, we can see whether or not they have to throw, uh, you know, their body in front of them to maintain, you know, kind of a momentum up this climb. But she looks like she's as we as Sebastian did. You know, she's laboring, but she looks good. She's keeping the legs turned over. You know, the arms are going forward. That left arm you were talking about isn't going any higher and lower than it really was before. She's just driving forward. And, you know, she looks really good. And there you go, crossing crossing the line for the big ring insurance Ironman run bonus. Uh, great work uh, by Daniela Reef.
That's right. And you see that big Swiss flag on the side. He was fanning her down, giving her a little <laughs> uh, patriotic inspiration. Good, good to see there. Um, but here she goes. And yeah, this is a cool spot. I mean, it does feel quite warm, but it feels quite good as well because everybody's yelling at you. You're the first woman to run up this hill, getting caught on someone's GoPro right there. And it, it's, it's pretty, pretty excellent. This is our race leader all the way from Switzerland by way of Cozumel, Daniela Reef. Yeah, no, she's uh, she looks really good. You know, she, as we said, you know, it's hard to get up this hill, and it looks like she's working hard. Uh, we are looking at Daniela Reef. Uh, great job for her to be in first place. Just quick update on what we've got from uh, the men's race, which is a little near the end. Um, with uh, through 14 miles, looks like Frederick Van Leerd and Ben Hoffman have actually pulled 30 seconds back on Sebastian Keenley. So Sebastian Keenley did falter a little bit in there over the last couple miles to lose 30 more seconds to those two gentlemen. Um, but uh, you know he's still holding strong. If he maintains a strong pace, he's going to win this race. But if he falters any more, those chunks of time, and it looks like uh, so this is an old split that we just got. But guys, we got any more information right now? We got Daniela, you know, doing the smart thing. There's nothing wrong from short course racing. You might think somebody would be afraid to stop through an aid station, but Daniela stopping, putting ice in her sports bra. You know, she's definitely hot, guys. She is. She's putting water, you know, over her head, ice in her sports bra. That's what you need to do in this race. It's just so hot that, you know, your job is obviously to run, but your job is to try to be as cool as you possibly, possibly can. Yeah. And if you don't do that, especially, you know, if, if you have an athlete that's about to push you to try to win this race, you know, you're going to you're gonna pop if you don't right. maintain your body temperature. By the way, I feel like we've been on this hill for an hour. It's been a while. It's so long. It, it's really tough. But with Rife, here's Reef. sorry, here's the thing with her. She's putting that ice, she's putting that cold water in the key spots, on the chest, down the shorts, um, on the wrist, where all these arteries and veins run. That's where you cool yourself, also on top of the head. She's a smart cookie. She's been yeah. trained well. What we're seeing is... Uh, just some really smart running in her first her first time here. You know, she's not racing like she's a rookie. She's just racing like, you know what, I've got the tools, I've got the training, I've got the belief. I'm going to do what I can. No, um, not at all. She's uh, she's having a great race, and she's she's going to breathe a sigh of relief. She's gotten over Polani, and she's going to take that left-hand turn uh, down the Queen K, uh, open up her stride a little bit, and, uh, you know, stretch it out. And she is doing a great job. We do have the men's split through 13 miles, Michael, and, uh, you know, a couple things, you know, we did talk about Sebastian Keenly losing a little bit of time to Frederick Van Leerd and uh, Ben Hoffman. Also, Marino Van Honacker is right behind Andy Potts, uh, 12 minutes back, so only a four minutes back from Frederick Van Leerd, but the big mover back, as far as I can tell, uh, Andreas Raylert. Looks well, like Raylor he's did, dropped. and he's, he's gone to back to 11. Potts has come back up past him, so obviously Raylor may have paid for that early far back. price, that early pace. He's still moving. He, he crossed the, uh, the uh, timing mat there at 13.03, at but he's lost some time, so he was charging hard, and he's, he's now paying for it. Van Burkle, Tim Van Burkle, wow. You know, I mean, it's his first time racing this event. And he's running his way into the, you know, into contention there. Potts, he's no stranger to this business. Ben Hoffman, I like the composure because it, it, the guy thought, hey, I'd like to get top 10. I'd like to yeah. go 830, 835. That gets me in the door. He's now blowing that away. So a little bit antsy. Can I hold on to it? He, he's handling that pressure very well right I now. think we talked about this last year, Michael. I don't know if you were on set when I talked about it today. But uh, Ben Hoffman, last year, a 15th for him was a breakthrough performance in the fact that he had never had a good race in Kona. Like he'd never been decent, really, in his mind. A 15th place for a guy who's won a few Ironmans maybe doesn't seem that big a deal, but he had a strong, steady race, and then he went back to the drawing board, had a good run at Coeur d'Alene, and came to this race with the confidence to have a good race. But um, right now we're looking at Daniela Reef, who's her first time in Kona. You know, she doesn't know what the outcome is going to be yet today, but she is she's putting her nose in the wind and doing the absolutely best, mm -hmm. the best race mm -hmm. that she can and she's she's doing quite well and tim van burkle you touched on for a second i mean that kid that kid has wheels that guy can run and if he gets with 10 miles to go feeling like hey this isn't this isn't as hard as i thought it was supposed to be you know he could he could roll some guys in the last five ten miles of this race for sure for sure and again okay so right now we're going to go over to an ironman foundation athlete from aurora colorado we welcome legacy program competitor george vale he's a member of the ironman foundation and a newton running ambassador tri-team 
And one of their driving principles, kokua, it's actually a Hawaiian word for selflessly helping and giving to others. When we asked George what kokua means to him, he said, it's all about experiencing life's journey through private actions towards other people. His team has raised over $180,000 since 2013 to support charitable endeavours in the communities where Ironman events are held. If you're keeping up with George along his way, he's wearing bib 996 today in the 45 to 49 year age group category. One more fun fact about George, he's got a chocolate, chocolate nub named Kona. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Who That's hasn't good. got a dog named Kona? <laughs> That's a great name, so good for him. And you know, we're getting, um, yeah, it, it's inspirational. I mean, they've got great stories and thank you for all these guys for sharing the Ironman Foundation. It's a great program, so a lot of money raised and it's really cool stuff. Oh, unbelievable, um, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, And so, again, one of the things I'd like to address, I talked about it briefly before, was, again, and, and it matters to me because it's all about preparation here. Mm -hmm. and, and I've said that Daniela Reef trained in Cozumel. I did say the temperatures are lower, but mind you, I also said the humidity levels are higher. higher. So I do see often, you go to Cozumel, it's very oppressive. Mm. So when you come to Cozumel, from Cozumel to here, it doesn't feel as humid. But the temperatures out on the Queen K can mm -hmm. be ridiculous. They can come up quite a bit higher. Mm -hmm. I think those highs and cold. Either way, it's a very great training grounds yeah. for Danielle Reef to come in here. I don't think she's struggling right now at all. No, I don't think she's struggling either. And uh, as a matter of fact, it doesn't look like that Kinley's struggling. Uh, yes, he's losing a little bit of time to Freddie Van Leter at the moment, but uh, it looks like he's got a, you know, quite a bit of time up, of the, up, up his sleeve. Yeah. Um, on the women's side of things, I mean, Rachel Joyce is still running pretty good. She's right in second place there. The girls are doing a great job right now. I'm very impressed with uh, also Mary Beth Ellis and Jody Swallow. Jody had a bit of a tough time on the bike today on the way back into town, yeah. but now she's hanging tough, and I'm really proud of her. No, no, she looks great. You know, she uh, overcame some adversity on the bike ride, and, you know, she didn't look necessarily fleet-footed at the beginning of the marathon when she left my vantage point in the transition, but, you know, she's obviously made her way back up to uh, Mary Beth Ellis, and she's she's running quite well. Yeah, yeah. but a leader on the course right now is Daniela Reef, and uh, she's from Switzerland, and uh, we did catch up with her during the week. She had plenty to say about quite a few things. Listen to this one. If you're ready to really hurt or ready to just push, that's... That's where it makes you go faster. And um, yeah, and also, uh, I mean, there's always in Ironman probably a point where you don't feel good. You get to a point where it's like either, yeah, you need energy or you have a cramp or you, you're just tired or I don't know. And um, well, that's, that's what I experienced. And um, then it's just like not to give up or just keep on, keep on going. And that's that's just mentally, I think. Fever on Thursday. Forgot to tell you. Too. Okay, so here we go. We got Sebastian Kinley out onto the uh, Energy Lab. He's got uh, about another mile before he comes out of the Energy Lab. We can see our overhead shots right now by our NBC helicopters. Don't forget, November 15, and our race will be on NBC Sports. Sebastian Kinley from Germany leads the Ironman. Amazing, and he looks great. So right now he's coming up, and, and I'll keep saying it, as long as he looks good, as long as he looks the same stride, turnover, arm carriage, everything looks the way it did when he left on Ali'i. This guy has got a lot of confidence building. When your confidence builds, it just really gives you those wings to keep it going. So, right, he looked over to the side and, and he's seeing the people going in. He's yep. going out. This is, a, this is a nice spot to be in. You've made the turn. All that mystery is gone. You've seen every inch of the course. So, in a really good spot, he's leading, of course, to uh, Frederick Van Leerde. And guess yep. what else? Ben Hoffman, he's still in third. So, Americans, yeah, you guys, cool. they're rooting for the Hoff. He's still in third place. Right on. Don't, don't yeah, and also, uh, yeah, well, uh, you know, Andy Potts is right in there as well, and Tim O'Donnell's still sitting just outside of the top 12 right now. So we've got three USA athletes inside of the top 12, which is really, really good. Yeah, but Ben great. Hoffman, he's having a, a banner day today. Um, you know, he, he ran a 2.43 earlier this year in Coeur d'Alene where he had his breakthrough run. Yeah. But uh, today, I tell you what, he's having a good old day with it out there in third place. Sebastian Kinley leads the 2014 Ironman World Championship presented by GoPro, and he's just a little bit outside of getting back onto the Queen Ka'umanu Highway, as now we see a little bit of a sign of fatigue from Daniela Reef. I just, for the very first time today, that I, I think that I've seen fatigue written on her face. I saw that too, and you can yeah. see it. The, this, the, there's just been a change in the upper body. You see it in the face shirt. You've seen yeah. a little bit of change in how she's yeah. running. 
okay, natural. It's really hard to do what she's doing, and so naturally she's going to look a little bit peaked, a little bit rough. But that's the first time she showed her cards. Yeah, but we look at the pace, and she's still she's doing still oh, she's still opening up a gap. She's now two forty seven in front of Rachel Joyce, at six eighteen and six twenty one up up on Mary Beth Ellis and Jody Swallow. Uh, she you know she does look like she's struggling, but she did good. You know Sebastian Sebastian Keenly uh, looks great right now. It's one of two spots on the run course where you get to see your competitors, and you know he's going to be running proud. He's going to make sure he looks great. Um, you know, Sebastian Keenley has only lost another 14 seconds on Frederick Failure. That's not a lot. One thing, I just got an update from the course. Unfortunately, it looks like Meredith Kessler has collapsed at mile eight. She's actually in a car. Um, she's having a wow. tough time right now, but she's she's being helped, but she's definitely out of the race at this point. Okay, so we're watching the Newton run course right now. Daniela Reef is uh, having her own uh, troubles out there at the moment. We see that she's getting very flushed in the face at the moment. Uh, the cheeks are getting really red, I think that she's just working extra hard. I mean, she still looks great, and her lead is going still out. Increasing. I mean, she's, she's still increasing her lead, so... Um, but, you know, getting back to that Meredith, Keth uh, Meredith yeah. Kessler, um, you know, situation, um, we, we talked about this in the early part of the show in the first hour, as a matter of fact. You know, when Michael and I talked about her, the big effort to get back up to Jody Swallow in the swim, then the big effort on the bike to get out in front. She got the preem, you know, the bonus, the, uh, the big ring bike insurance bike bonus today, $1,500, but now... That's not going to be obtainable because she's now out of the race. Yeah, no, and it's uh, you know it's too bad. Be, you know that's the price you pay. And you know we say she looks like she's struggling up front. Front, Daniela, she is. She has to if she wants to win this race. And she's going to get to the point where she's having a real rough day, but she still might win the race. And Meredith Kessler uh, paced it maybe not 100% correctly, uh, but maybe you know something else happened. But it sounds actually you know it sounds like she's having a tough time out there. She could, couldn't actually stand uh, mile eight. You know she's not one that quits easily. So uh, we've. Got got medical there, you know, taking care of her. But, uh, you know, our thoughts with Meredith. But right now, Daniela, all is going according to plan. And uh, part of that plan is involving a lot of pain. Absolutely. And you know what? Flush cheeks. I mean, some of the spectators I've seen in the back foot, they have <laughs> flush cheeks. It's hot out there. This girl's under a great deal of duress because she's putting herself there. Um, this one right now out there pushing herself right around the limits that she knows she has. So it's good. Eventually she can test them further. But right now she's doing what she was told to do. She's doing what her body said I can do. And that's great stuff. So um, looking to uh, a little bit further back the road, we know a lot of this race unfolds in that second half. And some of these gaps can flip-flop. They can cut dramatically. So, again, ch chatting to someone on the side, there's a lot of folks on bikes and motor scooters that will come along there. Who knows what information she's got? She maybe just got a peek at the leaderboard, so she knows the deficits um, to the gals behind her. But this is good. We've got uh, we've got um, our leader Sebastian Kenley coming up right here, about to exit the interstop soon. Soon. Very this soon. is on the uh, on the uh, Newton Run leg here. So. Yeah, Daniela Reef may be uh, leading the race right now, but uh, Jody Swallow is sitting inside of our top five, and uh, she had a little bit to say about the run as well. Let's listen to Jody. I think that anybody that wins this race is a very, very tough cookie. Um, it's not an easy course, um, no matter what anyone says. It's windy, it's incredibly hot and humid, and it's hilly. Um, and I think that the winner feels less pain but doesn't go through less pain um, during the race. I think that we're very good at, you know, when we win, to, at running around and even warming down. I've warmed down when, I, when I've won races, whereas when you come second and third, you just have no energy to do anything and you, you kind of collapse. I don't think it's necessarily a factor of who can hurt the most. Um, I think it all comes down to what you've done in training and what your body's capable of. But um, we'll all be on, on the 10 out of 10 hurt scale, I feel. Heads can learn a bit about the Queen's English there. That's how you speak the Queen's English. Jody Swallow absolutely fluent in the Queen's English. Okay, Sebastian Kinley, he's our leader on the course at the moment. He's from Germany and he's just about to come outside of our energy lab at the moment as he faces only 10 and a half kilometres to go or six and a half miles. Kinley is making sure that he's getting every ounce of, well, water over his head at the moment, trying to keep that core temperature down, guys. 
this is a very hot part of the run. Absolutely, is, absolutely. And it, you know, he's going to be uh, grateful to be able to get on this highway section of the course. It looks like he's struggling there a little bit. He's running slow, slow-ish, but he has so much time right now. He, now he knows that he has, as you said, 10k, 11k <laughs> left to go, and all he has to do is maintain that distance. And uh, you know, he's going to be fine. So he got everything on board, but he looks smooth. And Michael, I think you pointed out, he did the shake, the wit off again, but he looks great, and he's just maintaining control, doing what he needs to do to make sure he can keep running well. No, and I think he looked fine. I mean, the only time he's slowed down has been in an aid station. station. And so up the hill, of course, it's a little slower, but the only time there's been a noticeable change in his pace is going through an aid station. He does that intentionally. He does that smartly. He's right now back on the highway. He's running with a gradual downgrade. There's a breeze. It's beautiful. So this man is in control of his game right now. It's obviously very lame to do this, but I'm picking him for the win. Um, All right. Well, uh, <laughs> well stay with us, everyone here. This is the 2014 Ironman World Champ. Championship presented by GoPro. Kinley leads our run. He's only 10 and a half kilometers or 35 to 40 minutes away from the race finish. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Definitely, people have to be so unbelievably crazy. <laughs> We're so addicted to it, the Iron Man brand. I mean, people tattoo it on themselves. Yeah. This is not about balance. I mean, you look at what we do, it's about complete imbalance. Cheers, guys. I do think people need to be crazy. You definitely have to be crazy. Yes. 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 Oh, yeah. I don't think you need to be crazy, because I'm not crazy. <laughs> My dad used to say, champions are made when no one is watching. Momentum. The power to keep pushing. The discomfort zone. That's what I'm building with chocolate milk. What are you building? Nutrients to refuel, protein to rebuild, backed by science. Foster Grant. Affordable fashion, ultimate sun protection. Why would I wear anything else? My taper begins about three weeks out from a full Ironman. Um, most of the work's done by then, and if it's your A race, you don't have to worry about really carrying any fitness past you know that final race. So I think it's really important to start freshening up uh, three weeks out. And I think the hardest part of a taper is kind of getting through those moments where you don't feel great, when your body's absorbing all the work you've done, and you think you should feel great, but you you know, you really don't. Um, that's all part of the process, and you know, you'll come around, and you know, by race day, you will feel great. I'm Rachel Joyce, and you're watching Iron Man Live. Coverage today is sponsored by Milk Pep, the official refuel beverage of Iron Man. Cyclone, the official bike marketplace of the Iron Man World Championship. Tier the official swim course sponsor of Ironman. Ironman Pro Eyewear by Foster Grant, the official eyewear of Ironman. And IronmanStore.com, official Ironman merchandise with free shipping on orders over $100.
Welcome back to 2014 Ironman World Championship presented by GoPro. Uh, this year, where do you rank? The all-world athlete program is Ironman's way of rewarding age group athletes' hard work, dedication, and performance. The program uses Ironman's age group ranking system to determine where athletes rank amongst their age group each calendar year. Only a top 10% are awarded all-world athlete status. Find out more information on Ironman.com. All right, thank you very much, Michael. And uh, now it's time to go over to an age group update here. So after the bike today, our first male off the bike was James Gilfillan from Great Britain. And in second was Pierre-Yves Gugu from Canada, Daniel Stubliski from the USA, Adam Zucco from the USA as well, and then also Xavier Kopek from Australia with the first five off the bike in our age group men. Now in our age group women, our first girl from Great Britain was Simone Daly. Second was from the USA, Samantha Morrison, followed by Great Britain's Caroline Livesley, Katrin Esfeld from Germany, and Nicole Bretting from Germany was also off the bike there in the top five. But making it out onto the first uh, time split on the run today, James Gilfillan still had a lead. 41 seconds back was Daniel Stubleski. Then it was Pierre-Yves Gigou, Xavier Kofek and Levi Maxwell from Australia moving up into the top five positions. And we've only had two girls through that three-mile mark right now, and that is Simone Daly from Great Britain and Samantha Morrison from the USA. So that's how our age groupers stay, stand on the course right now. We're going to head back out to our men's and women's coverage right out on the Queen K there as we see Daniela Reef still holding down to a lead and Sebastian Kinley inside of the last eight kilometres. Uh, Sebastian looks, you know, just as, as as strong as he did before. So I don't see any chinks in the armor there. And looking to uh, Daniela Reef, there is a bit of a change. She's starting to muscle it a little bit more. You know, she's fighting it a little bit more. It's not a bad thing. It just notes that she is muscling it right now. So a little bit more um, back and forth of that left shoulder. You see it go forward, back, forward, back. Uh, obviously, it's not an ideal thing. But as you're battling and fighting through an Ironman, one of the things you have to know how to do is run ugly. And, and she you know it's an expression run ugly it means just hey don't give it up when things feel bad when you've just got to do anything to get yourself through running ugly equals fast marathon splits yeah absolutely as we said it's hard it's hard to win this race nobody's going to do it easy you know when uh, craig alexander and his many wins his last one where he went uh, under the record you know we thought he might have to stop completely because he was cramping you know he's running down plani and getting the stiff leg and cramping you know he's pushing it to the edge and uh, as you said running ugly but sebastian keenly doesn't look like he's running ugly on the left side but this is this is the part of the course where uh, where it gets real you know last year this is where frederick van leard was able to you know keep his gap and run strong and and win his race and sebastian keenly has a lot more time in his pocket than frederick van leard did last year and looks just as good as freddie did yeah, that's true. That's true. And I mean, I just, if I look at the men's race here, I'm just seeing, I'm just seeing someone with no trouble. I'm seeing him with no trouble right now. Like yeah. I said, you know, he's approaching an aid station. Let's see what happens. I suspect he'll slow. He'll grab a cup. He'll pour it over his head. He'll grab a sponge. He'll squeeze it. He'll drink. Cup sponge. I mean, I think this is what he's going to do. He'll Great probably cup. grab, you know, another cup. It, it's just very well managed, very well executed. And and as it comes down, almost a stop, almost a walk. Remember that. That looks good. That's a smart thing. Yep. Well done, my friend. This is why he's got two Ironman 70.3 World Championships in his name. He's a, he's a strong yeah. and fast and athlete. He's also very smart. And let's not forget that he is getting splits from, I'm sure, some people out there, some spectators out there. But, you know, they've Ironman has uh, you know a moto out there with a board that's giving him splits behind and as long as he's not seeing any major moves and yeah i probably you know he knows frederick van leard is going to be there to pounce if he falters at all but i think you know he's looking on that list for names like andreas Raylert, jan Ferdino, you know runners yvonne rania he's looking for those names that are able to take um, 90 seconds you know at the end of a race out of him 60 seconds 40 seconds a mile none of those athletes are at this point really in uh, distance, within oh, yeah. distance to be able to catch Sebastian Keenly. So I think the fact that Frederick Van Leerd is the next athlete to him, he has to be aware, he has to 
to, to be strong and can't falter, but he's not really worried that Frederick is going to make a massive move and take 45 seconds a mile out of him. <laughs> it's, it's the Andreas Raylards and the Jan Ferdinos that are going to do something like that, and they're not really within striking range And you know who's right running now. really well right now is Luke McKenzie. He's he? made his way up into 13th place oh, right now, so him, he's, he's running really well. He's only 21 minutes down now, so he's uh, doing pretty well. Marino Van Hoenacker has lost a couple of places, but Ben Hoffman is holding steady. Tim Van Berkel, Ferdino, and Potts are running as a threesome there along the Queen K Highway, doing very, very well. But on the women's side, let's give a Marinda Carfrey update. She has made 20 seconds a mile out of the last couple of miles. So she slowed down just a touch. Okay. Now she's, uh, you know, 10.30 down instead of 11.33 miles ago. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah she's, uh, she's staying steady, and, you know, you know, she knows that she has to stay on that throttle, and, you know, she's going to have... You know, she is a human being, right? So she's going to have moments where maybe she's not moving as quickly as she was before, but she's still going to be making up time, uh, you know, as long as she's moving more or less because she's just that high caliber of an athlete. But she has a lot of time to make up, Michael. And for her to put herself out there, you know, Marinda Carfrey, does it? Does she care necessarily if she gets another podium in this race? I don't, I don't really think so. I think she wants, as you said, number three win. So she really has to put it out there. She has to put her body on the absolute limit to win. And and, you know, she might not have uh, it today, and she might have a little bit too big of a gap, but she's still absolutely having a crushing run here today. Oh, yeah, and I think she'll get in there. She'll fight her way up to the podium. We saw her within range, I mean, very close to it, if not. Um, we were getting some reports at mile 10. Daniela Reef's lead was growing to about 247 over Rachel Joyce yeah. in second. Uh, so that's happening right now. And then also, um, as you at home are viewing, and you want to see, we've got a promo code Kona that you can use at the IronmanStore.com. So this gives you 10% off your purchases uh, for the next hour. So get in there and take advantage of that IronmanStore.com. Take home some good stuff. Back at Kinley. Yep, back at Sebastian Kinley leading the race right now. Well under five miles to go here as the strong German is giving us another experience out here on the lava fields. It was uh, Thomas Hellriegel who was one of our first German athletes to win this race, and he's doing it exactly the same way as how Kinley is doing it with a very strong bike and a strong run when Thomas Hellriegel won the race way back at the end of the 90s there. And now Kinley is now forcing his way toward that finish line and going to become certainly the next uh, German champion as he gets across that line. Uh, Norman Stadler as well was a two-time champion, also racing from the front exactly the same, Matt. Yeah, no, he's, uh, he's looking great, and it does seem like the win is more or less his if he keeps it together. It, it hurts me almost to say that. You know, you never want to jinx somebody, but, you know, the, the name I was saying he might be worried about if he sees uh, the name come up on the board as in second place is Jan Ferdino. And Jan Ferdino looks to be, from the updates, we're getting only 250 meters behind Frederick Van Leerd and Ben Hoffman, who are 845 behind. So obviously, it's still a huge gap for him to get the win. But Jan Ferdino now, after his issues on the bike ride, looks like he's running into second place. And I think that athlete, he knows that 10K distance pretty well, doesn't he, Michael? I think <laughs> he when does. he gets within 10K of the finish line, he is going to absolutely roll. He probably so. He'll just keep the pressure on. He's probably been running intensely uh, since he started the marathon. Sure. Just disappointed from his bad luck on the course. But the guy, I called him in second. He's coming in second. <laughs> I just had to get something right. <laughs> anyway, uh -huh. um, not a lot of my predictions too. hitting true. <laughs> so there's a great shot of Rachel Joyce. I mean, she looks smooth as butter. She looks very good. Second place there, 247 down at the 10 mile point. That's already now. She's well past that. So. Uh, we're looking at footage of both Rachel Joyce and Sebastian Keenle. Uh, Rachel Joyce, you know, second place last year. I know she obviously wanted to continue that stellar progression, uh, six five four three, and then go two one. But it looks like she's gonna have to really make some magic through and out of the energy lab. Yeah, she's gonna have to, but she's not that far back, right? She's def she's definitely in striking distance. 100%. Update on course. We're talking about Ben Hoffman right now, and it might be, you know, maybe not right now, but at least in the last couple of minutes, Ben Hoffman was in second place. Frederick Van Leer walking out of the energy lab and Hoffman was able to pass him but we did know from the previous update Jan Ferdino right behind Ben Hoffman and Frederick Van Leer Ben Hoffman having the absolute race of his life after a top 15 finish last year second place for the American it's been since 2009 since an American was in that position uh, unbelievable and it's great to see in the sport for the US we also have Andy Potts as you said still in the top I believe top 5 or 6 and uh, he's in 6th place right now uh, so it, quite a battle, and I think today we even said, or I said it at least, that you know Tim O'Donnell and Andy Potts were the Americans we would expect to be fighting it out for that Michael, spot right now. Michael, did you hear ben what Hoffman. he just said? 
he Uh-oh. said it this morning. I don't, uh, hey, he's trying to get credit. Hey, that's no, this I'm morning. saying We're I did it wrong. I, I know, called it wrong. Right here, I think we're gonna have to go back to the tape and have a listen to that one. <laughs> I always go right oh, here. Oh, yeah, we can see like. Mr. Sebastian Keenley slowing down again. So that time, ice and water down the front. He's finding a very key spot there where you've got, again, large veins in the shorts. I'm not trying to be <laughs> rude here. I'm trying to say a lot of blood flow there. When you get the cooling there, you're going to really help yourself out. Um, again, the femoral artery that runs through there, Matt, is the femoral artery that runs blood through your legs, and that's a cooling mechanism. So many people don't know that, but poor ice on your shorts, it cools I'm the body. I'm just going to sit back and uh, let you keep talking, Michael. Yeah, there you go. So I think the Kinley is <laughs> also putting a whole bunch of ice, you know, down the front of his, uh, you know, the top there. And uh, also, you know, the glands and the glands are where you want to cool down and you know you'll find those under your arms you'll find them on your neck you'll find them down around your uh, legs and uh, other places but uh, right now you know that he's just trying to keep himself cool and what's really impressive about Kinley is he does slow down he's purposely smart. just trying to yeah. pick up his nutrition the guy is smart I mean he studied physics and everything and and he's still a student you know he, he still does all of his online coaching I mean online learning and everything but uh, as we see Rachel Joyce now heading toward the uh, the change over here we'll see our lead men going one way and uh, Rachel Joyce going the other way and they say a friendly little hello there and uh, there goes Sebastian and there goes Rachel going off into the other direction but look at Kinley uh, for a guy that yeah. was injured four weeks ago he's doing yeah. really well and a real <laughs> disappointment for him at the Ironman 70.3 World Championship he wanted to defend his championship he didn't do it you know he'd won it twice before and uh, this year a big disappointment but today if he holds this pace and he holds his position it's got to be very very happy yeah and what's what was great to see with Sebastian at that World Championships was no excuse. All he said was, I didn't have it today. He didn't say anything about his injury as far as I could see. He said, I didn't have it today. The other guys did. And maybe it was because he knew that his focus was on today and he and was going to be prepared for today. And but Matt, he's yeah. a true professional and he's oh. a class act and he would never put himself no. in that position. No, and he's, uh, you know, I can't wait to, to see him come down Elite Drive because he deserves it as a class individual. But, you know, you pointed out earlier, taking time to slow down, putting water, putting ice, uh, cooling himself down. That It looks like he's giving away time right but he's giving away 10 15 seconds he's got eight minutes if he doesn't give up those 10 seconds he's at risk of losing those eight minutes right like that's exactly. if you crack near the end i mean we've seen so many people doing it talking to chris lee last night about his experience when he was uh, 400 meters from the finish line and I mean he he almost didn't survive that day you know like he he was in in the hunt to win that race and he passed out and that was it for him Sebastian Keenly doing the little things giving up 10 15 seconds he doesn't need glory he does he does not care about course records he wants to cross that finish line first yeah you know what he'll give up everything to say that it was worth it you know just to concentrate on this and uh, as much as he wanted his 70.3 crown um, he traded in for this one for sure yeah. and uh, you know it wasn't a great day for Sebastian up in Montreal Blanc just five weeks ago but uh, today he's having the race that he knew that he could have and uh, you know it, it all comes down to the preparation and he's prepared very very well he's been doing a lot of pool running lately not a lot of running on the road so uh, he's done it right you know it's very very difficult to believe in yourself after running in the pool all those times instead of running on the road do i have the fitness do i have the run speed is it going to hurt my legs but today believed in himself trusted in his preparation and now it's paying off yeah and i think you know that's one thing people don't notice or you know sometimes we appreciate these athletes so much on a physical level you know sebastian mentally is so tough and you know he can put everything into perspective better than any athlete I've ever seen. You know, he if he has a bad race six weeks out from World Championships, he's like, well, that was the race six weeks out from World Championships. I'm focusing on that race, you know? Like, he can put it in a box and come back and have a good race when he needs to. For sure, and it's 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 he's got that a very precise German mentality, but he's also a very laid back fella because he makes jokes, you know, he cracks uh, them at the press conferences. He loves this stuff. So, you know, it's awesome to see. And, you know, you're watching the men's leader. We do have splits that we've seen at 13 miles halfway through this race. Rachel Joyce has now slipped to three minutes, 45 seconds behind the leader, Daniela Reef. And then we've also got a Jody Swallow has wow. now made her way into third, of course, 705 back. Caroline Steffen, a couple seconds behind her. Mary Beth Ellis slipping to fifth. Miranda Carfrey closing that gap. 
Guess what, guys? Miranda Carfrey is only <laughs> nine minutes down well, at she's, halfway. She's gone back from the 20 seconds a mile to the 30 seconds a mile over the last 30. Uh, sorry, over the last three miles. So Miranda Carfrey is certainly headed toward that top five. Can she crack the top three? She's not too far away from it. She's I only so. she's only two minutes and three seconds away from the top three at the moment. But uh, when we get back to look at 19 miles, it's Sebastian Kinley from Freddie Van Leerde. Then it was Ben Hoffman, Jan Fredino, Tim Van Berkel, Andy Potts from the USA, Cyril Vernon from France, Nils Fromhol from Germany, Marino van Hoenacker from Belgium, and Mike Tweltzik from Germany in the top 10 right now. So Sebastian Kinley, he is a two-time Ironman 70.3 world champion, also the Ironman European champion this year. And I tell you what, today he looks like he is certain to run onto the first place on the podium today and collect that first Ironman world championship presented by GoPro. And boy, is he doing it in strong fashion. Absolutely, and it's fun to watch. I mean, the guy has been looking the exact same. I really don't see much change. He's calculated. He's precise, he's strong, he's obviously motivated. This is really exciting action here. The guy would have to absolutely melt. So you said, hey, Fredino might be able to bring him back. Fredino cannot bring him back, but what could happen <laughs> is he could melt. I mean, he could explode completely and cramp, and then he would lose that lead. But right now, at this pace, versus anything else, the math is just in yeah, his yeah, favor. Yeah, it absolutely. would be you know two minutes per mile. So no one's gonna run that into anyone. No. It would have to absolutely be a failure of some sort of uh, muscle, just yeah. a breakdown. No forward progress would be what it would take yeah, to lose this and, lead. And he's at this point not gonna let that happen, right? No. As we said, he's been in control all day and you know he put the effort in when he needed to and now he's putting uh, you know the effort to maintain a great pace but make sure he's using uh, his nutrition and being smart. And right now, you know, we're getting updates. I know you guys did mention uh, Marinda Carfrey still making up time, but to notice where Jody Swallow is gone. versus Marinda, yeah. Marinda Carfrey now only two minutes outside of the podium yeah, yeah. position. So Marinda has uh, two minutes behind Jody Swallow. She can sweep up those athletes in front of her, but two minutes to the podium position for Marinda Carfrey. Yeah, two minutes, she's on there. Let's just say she's on there. But again, I mentioned this beforehand. <laughs> the, what could stop her is her efforts. Herself. I mean, the only thing that could stop her is herself. We said that before. The girl belongs on the podium one, two, or three every time. But if she just got a little careless, ran a little bit too hard, put a little bit too much, it's the only thing that will stop her. Right now, the gals in front of her, she knows them well, also part of the same squad. She's trained with them. She knows the ins and outs. She's good friends with Rachel Joyce. She knows this uh, group up ahead. So I really do see her getting on podium, but I also want to see what happens in the last five miles. I'm sure folks at home do too. Everybody does. Yeah, that's why we're watching. It's going to be a great show. And so again, looking at the Newton Run course, we've got a fella that has been large and in charge all day long. This guy, fourth place, third place, now rocking it out in first, smiling for the cameras, not exactly, but he will be soon. Yeah, he will be soon, and, and you know, we're not gonna get ahead of ourselves, but his finish lines are some of the best in the sport. Uh, I'm looking forward to the possibility of him crossing the finish line first. Uh, he loves it, he doesn't take any big victory that he gets for granted. He enjoys every second of it, and uh, he puts his blood, sweat, and tears into it. You can see it when he crosses the finish line in first place that uh, he loves this sport, and uh, for him to be at the top, top level of this sport is a dream come true for him. But For sure. He's got 5.5 kilometers to go, just about three and a half miles to go. He's once again slowing down in an aid station, which is just so smart. And once he drops these cups, he gets out of this aid station, one little hump, one little hump, which he's on now, and then he's got the long hill, yeah, the Dave yeah. Scott, Mark Allen Hill from 25 years ago today. We saw those guys rock and roll up that hill, battling each other out. Mark dropped Dave, uh, took the lead, took the win. Right now, he is approaching that hill. It's the final hill. There's still a lot of racing to be done. Yeah. You still have tw uh, two miles as you hit the bottom of that hill. you got to turn right and bomb the downhill a mile from the bottom of the hill in. It's still a lot to go, but the guy is within emotional and, 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 and basically he's breathing the finish. He's with emotional range of the finish line. Um, he's just getting carried on fumes in through there. It's just, it's drawing him in. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Over last year's winner, He's got an eight-minute lead, Welchie. That has got to feel good. Yeah, it's got to feel good. And we did uh, get word out on the highway that uh, Freddie Van Leer had actually uh, slowed to a walk and it was uh, just stretching it out there. So Freddie just uh, maybe experiencing a few cramps. We remember uh, back in 2011 when Craig Alexander was leading the race. It was actually the year he broke the world record in 803. And he was up on the uh, corner of the Queen K and uh, Polani Road where he actually stopped. 
he uh, put his you know, hips forward and he stretched out those hamstrings and he still got to the finish line and broke the record by 12 seconds. It can be done, and that's a message, I think, of Ironman and athletes that are aspiring and figure out how to get better and learn. You can cramp and set the world record. You can cramp and win a race. It, it's part of the program, so coping with it mentally if you are cramping. Can you hit the reset button, regroup and say, I'm all right, what do I need to do? I'll stretch, I'll recover, yep. I'll run hard again. You just, you have to do that sometimes, and um, it, it's part of the game. No, absolutely, and that's, uh, you know, part of, part of the game for sure, and, you know, that's the type of thing if you mess up, uh, it's going to end up badly for you. And as we said, Sebastian is doing a great job. Uh, but as you said, you know, earlier, Greg, we have some splits on our top 10 men. Right now, still holding himself in 10th place is Mike Twelsek. Great race from him right uh, behind Marino Van Honacker, three minutes to him. Nils Firmhold, 13 minutes from the front. Cyril Vinot from France is in sixth place, and he's only 11 minutes back. Uh, a big mover also in the race, Bart Arnotes, uh, had one of our fastest run splits. Was it 244, I think, last year, Michael? But he's yep, now in 11th place, so those top five aren't necessarily safe with an athlete like Bart uh, running running well in this race. Yeah, why not bring another Belgium into the mix? These guys are hard <laughs> as nails. Good work, Bart. And then just, I mean, looking at Ben, he was losing time to that chasing trio. Jan Fredino now two minutes, 25 seconds down, stalled out with 10K to go. Of course, that's achievable. But again, these you know the athlete that is more experienced is Ben Hoffman from the United States. He's more experienced at this distance. He's run those last six and a half miles before where Jan has not. So I look at this and I say, well, my my odds are you know in favor of Ben sticking it out and holding on to the podium. If not, yeah. fourth or fifth will be still quite well, I don't phenomenal. Know. I, I, I think reckon, he can do it. Yeah, I reckon uh, Fredino's even got a chance to run into second place here. I mean, if he gets himself going, I mean, you know how good he is. But uh, let me just uh, point this out. I, I look at, uh, you know, Sebastian Kinley, and from the front, when you look at him run, he looks a lot like Craig Alexander. And, exactly uh, what I said. Yeah, I, I believe yeah, it. And, uh, <laughs> and he's got a beautiful, he's just got a beautiful rhythm, and he's, got, he's just got that really nice and straightforward action. He's, his feet are planted in the right spot. He's biomechanically very, very nice to look at. And his quads, you can see that his quads are engaging every time. And uh, Craig had that bounce. And Sebastian has a bounce in his running step. And I, I really do like the, the look of his running style at the moment. So uh, It's funny, you know, from the front, you know, I saw that same thing. You look at it in the colors when, when Craig raced with the white and the black. It's kind of the yeah. same thing. And you can see that, the slight arm crossing over the hand, crossing over the midline a little bit. It's just that really bent, greater, you know, like a 70 degree bend. It, it's very similar to the way Crowey, um, obviously uh, another guy who has just lit it up on this course, which Yuri. is what Sebastian's doing right now. Yes, exactly. As we see, uh, just heading up the other way, another one of our pro women just heading out on the course. They are seven hours and 46 minutes into their race. Our pro men are seven hours, 51 minutes, uh, or actually seven hours and 52 minutes into their course right now. So we're looking at a a uh, finishing time of around about eight hours and ten minutes or a little bit more today. So as Sebastian Kinley is now making his way to the top of the hill here. He's already gone past Honokah Harbour. And there goes uh, another one of our pro women the other way. He's going out past Honokah Harbour, which signals around about five kilometres to go here. So just over three miles to go in our race here for Sebastian Kinley, leading the 2014 Ironman World Championship, presented by GoPros, gets a thumbs up by another one of our pro athletes just heading through there mike once again and you guys are following us online we're getting some great commentary from twitter thanks keep that coming this one's worth reading for sure norman stadler the guy that won here 2004 2006 german athlete obviously he just sent a tweet back as we're discussing sebi and he just said that's a machine sebastian kinley and it's so true <laughs> favorite that right now because it's absolutely true you just machine like you know this is the first time He's well, slowed before the aid station, but you know what? Yeah. He's on track. No, he's on track. And you know what? Norman knows. He's a two-time Ironman world champion. And uh, you know what? Norman was a machine as well. And uh, he raced Kinley in his uh, latter stages of Norman's uh, career and uh, when Sebastian was getting going. So Norman knows exactly uh, how good Kinley is, especially on the bike, because I wouldn't mind betting that Kinley was just a little bit behind Norman, you know, in some of the short course races that he did way back then, you know, about six to eight years ago. And bear in mind, so right now, 
this is the second to last significant uphill. It's a grinder, and you come over the top of this hill, you drop down, you're in a little valley. It was previously the 11 mile mark of our outbound. So that's where you're at. You've got to come over here. You're very near to the dump. You can pull off to the right, there's the dump. That's where you're at geographically for those of you that have been on this course. You crest this hill, you drop down. So any minute now, he's going to regain that fluidity. He's going to regain that movement. There it is. He yep. slows like you're thinking, oh, he's over, but it's so calculated. Now he back just, to the stride, arm swing, yeah. really good. He just Downhill great. and the final climb. He just gradually gets into it. He's just like a turbo diesel right now. You know, just waiting for the momentum to kick in. You know, it's almost like he's running on with the choke, and then he pushes the choke button in, and he gets back yeah, into right. his stride again. No, that's a good but, point. But uh, look, Kinley is just in complete control right now. Yes, we all know that he's slowed down a bit, but he does have quite a big gap. He's yeah. over eight minutes at the moment on the current world champion, and also, you know, Jan Fredino, Ben Hoffman, and Tim Van Berkel, Andy Potts. They're right in there, but they are quite considerably a decent amount of time. Yeah, Greg, so down. I just got an update from a uh, yeah, source on course that Ben Hoffman is in second place. We had a rumor that Frodo had gotten there. Frodo wasn't quite as, as close as, as we heard, but he's a minute back from Ben Hoffman. Uh, so Ben Hoffman in second, Frodo in third. All right, as we run off to a break, Sebastian Kinley's edging his way closer to an Ironman World Championship, and Daniela Reef from Switzerland leads our women's race. Don't go away. We'll be right back for the conclusion of the 2014 Ironman World Championship presented by GoPro. My dad used to say, champions are made when no one is watching. Momentum. The power to keep pushing. The discomfort zone. That's what I'm building with chocolate milk. What are you building? Nutrients to refuel, protein to rebuild, backed by science. It all started 25 years ago with a sewing machine, a cyclist, a fashion student, and a simple idea to build a better bike short. And from these humble beginnings, Savoy was born. While our garments have evolved, our core philosophy remains the same. We ride, we run, we make the gear that we want to wear. It's always about going faster because it's a race, but it's about going faster with a minimum input of energy possible. Minimizing drag and aerodynamics plays a huge role because you want to be able to expend your energy in a way that you get a massive return on that investment, i.e. going further down the road and also saving energy for the marathon, which is a huge determining factor in success or failure in any triathlon. Champions aren't born. Champions are made. Will. Determination. Greatness. Tear. Get made. I'm Luke McKenzie, and you're watching Iron Man Live. Coverage today is sponsored by Foster Grant, the official eyewear of Iron Man. Sugoi, the official performance apparel of Iron Man. Tear, the official swim course sponsor of Iron Man. Lifeproof, official sponsor of the Iron Man World Championship and IronManStore.com. Official Iron Man merchandise with free shipping on orders over
2014 Ironman World Championship presented by GoPro. Sebastian Kindle from Germany had a good swim this morning, an even better bike ride getting off the bike in first place today. But it's been his run. He's been very impressive running out in the first three miles today at sub six minute miles. He's hang on, hung on to the speed throughout the majority of the Ironman marathon portion, the third discipline in this year's World Championship. And now the smiles are coming out for Kinle. He's on Mark and Dave's Hill, where 25 years ago it was Iron War. Mark Allen, Dave Scott were locked in battle until that 23 mile mark. And then it was Mark Allen to go on to take his first Ironman out of six victories right here in 1989. And that was Iron War back then, 25 years ago. And that's coming from your third place finish in that same race, the 23 <laughs> year old age grouper, Greg Welch. Awesome yeah. job, Greg. But right now, this is the, the current, this is the future and the present right now. Um, you know, this is Frederick Van Leerde, I mean, sorry, Sebastian Kinley yeah. on the last hill. Sorry, you got to make mistakes. The last hill before he comes down to the Thunder Supplies, the folks on Polani. Of course, Kuakini, the wrap all the way around Hualalai onto Lee Drive. Yeah, he uh, he looks like he looks like he's he's tired. He looks tired, but uh, you know he still has some work left to do. He's still f extremely focused. Uh, you know, Michael, as he's pouring ice underneath his armpits, as you said, getting uh, the cold water, the cold ice where it matters. It's the big veins, and he's uh, cooling himself down. And uh, yeah. you know, as you said, not much longer to go. Grabs a big bottle. He wants a whole bottle of water. Uh, <laughs> those are the those are the 99 cent ones. Making sure he does his best <laughs> to get it in the trash can and. Uh, you know, just a little jog down the road, a few miles left to go. So we know our graphic states that he's ahead of Frederick Van Leerde. We know Frederick Van Leerde is now walking yeah. with Andreas Rehler, former podium finisher from Germany. So our defending champion has dropped back. But what we do know is Sebastian Kenley is a 7 minute, 24 second lead over Mr. Ben Hoffman from the United States. Behind him, only a minute six back is Jan Ferdino from Germany. Tim Van Berkel in his first show here at the Big Island from Australia. He's in fourth. Really pretty good debut racing in third and fourth. We've got contenders one and two. All right, so as we see Sebastian Kinlay just edging his way up to Polani Road, he's going to make a right-hand turn. Then it's going to be all downhill to the finish line for the 2013 Ironman 70.3 world champion. Sebastian Kinlay is now edging his way toward that finish line, and he's got a very healthy lead at the moment, but in second place, he's from the USA and he is 7 minutes and 24 seconds down. Ben Hoffman is now in second. Jan Fredino, the 2008 Olympic champion in third at 8.30. Tim Van Berkel from Australia at 9.47 down in fourth place. And also from the USA in fifth is Andy Potts at 10.16. Uh, behind our leader right now. So Sebastian Kinley is doing a really good job of it out there. He's only got about two to 300 yards to go before he makes his right-hand turn onto Polani Road for the last time today. Kinley is on the way to the finish line. That is right, Greg, and he's got a bombing downhill that he's going to tackle here, and that one crushes the quads. It's really hard oh, running downhill, brutal. although it's also partially easy because the dehydrated body rolls downhill well. Yeah. But you know what? This is what you live and train for. So 70.3, can't even remember it. Right now what he's oh, thinking is, yeah. I did it right. Yeah, he's, uh, this is the race he's always dreamt of. As soon as he began wanting to do triathlon, uh, training to do triathlon, became a professional triathlete, this is 100% the goal that mattered for him. Uh, Sebastian Keenly absolutely crushing it. It almost looks like he, he looks better now than he did two miles ago. That all, all that ice, all that he put in, I think he's getting energy. I think he can hear Mike Riley right now. He can hear town. He's getting excited. He wants his pain to be over as soon as possible, but more importantly, he wants that joy. He knows how much joy is on a Lee Drive waiting for him. Oh, yeah, let's take a bet. When does the first smile break oh, his man. face? It's I'm thinking coming. maybe one on Polani, but it's otherwise coming. probably not to Lee, the full-blown. But yeah. I have to say... With an eight-minute lead, a seven-minute lead, rather, 7.20, you know what? Oh. You can start smiling as you run down that hill. He can hear it. He can feel it. I can hear it. I can feel it. I'm not even in the race. This is yeah. amazing. Right here, the energy is going to draw this man up around that corner and down the hill. No, and it's certainly not easy. You know, we saw Craig Alexander cramp late into the race. We don't know. You know, his adductors might be ready to go at any moment. He might be dealing with something right now that's much more important than what we're talking about. But, you know, he... I mean, a handless clap behind him there. People are encouraging him, but, you know, he's probably going to wait till he gets down Polani because, as you said, running down a hill like that is pretty tough, especially on fatigue legs, especially on fatigue legs um, from 
getting to the front of this race. I mean, to get up almost a 10 minute lead on the best in the world at this sport on, on this course is uh, super taxing on the body. And this guy, you know, wasn't dealing necessarily with 100% body coming in, or at least he wasn't four weeks ago, right? So this guy is definitely on the edge, but he looks like he's got his energy back because that arm swing is perfect. Sebastian Keenly looks amazing. I cannot wait to watch him cross the finish. And there's his buddy from Germany, Hannes Hawaii Tours, yelling at him from the sideline. And these guys are giving him everything oh, they've man. got. He's giving everything he's got. And you know what? Even if he is in distress, adductors, hamstrings, whatever, I'm sure they hurt. But right now, he could overcome any of that. Absolutely. I even if he had to stop, which I don't think he will, this guy is in charge. He's yep. got it. He's going to come around the corner. All that energy, all that excitement, everything he's been training for everything it comes to right now so looking at it as well i mean what did you know we were just speculating on the injuries maybe he was maybe he was just bluffing maybe he was totally. watering to save his legs who totally. knows maybe that's just a tactic he got in the water said i'm gonna freshen up we don't know here's your picture in picture good to see it back we've got energy lab footage of our women's leader daniela reef what do you think? She's just in the corner of the picture. Uh, Matt, what do you think? Yeah, she looks good. I mean, it's hard to see, you know, the color of her cheeks. I mean, that was a give for her earlier. You know, she's very hot. She probably hasn't cooled down too much. But, you know, this is a really tough spot uh, to be, be coming into. It's very, very hot, as we said. Um, you know, you're going up the hill. She's going up the hill at this point. She looks, she looks really good, and I think she's in control. The last gap we got, she was over three minutes or just around three minutes in front of Rachel Joyce. And the big danger of a big mover, you know, besides Rachel, was uh, Marinda Carfrey, and she had quite a gap on Marinda Carfrey. So, you know, I think uh, Daniela is doing a great job. And as, as we've talked about before, this is one of the few key points on the race where you can get – you can get eyes on your competitors, so you can do a split if you want. You know, you, d you dare not hit your watch because you want your competitors to think you don't even care. You're that much in control. You don't even care what the time is, but you're certainly going to get an estimation of what that time gap's going to be. And Sebastian Keenly knows he's got quite a gap. You know, we do have, we had splits on the, on the men's race. Uh, those athletes behind him, Ben Hoffman, under eight minutes back. You know, he was moving up. Uh, John Ferdino was pretty darn close to Ben Hoffman with Tim Van Burkle, I think, less than two minutes behind Ben Hoffman. So you got an athlete like John Ferdino breathing down your neck as uh, Ben Hoffman does with less than 10K to go. That's pretty intimidating. We're talking about an Olympic champion in Beijing, a hot race. You know, he knows he can run a very, very fast for that distance and almost probably faster than anybody else on this course. So question is, Hoffman, I mean, he we want him to do so well. Is it, uh, is it hard to be in that position and say, okay, do I fight it out and try to beat this guy for second place, or do oh, yeah, I do absolutely. I do I go for third? No, 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 absolutely. This okay. guy's holding yeah. on to his spot. No, Ben yeah. Hoffman's in second place. He's not thinking about Olympic gold medals. What's he thinking is I'm in second place. I'm gonna hold World it as long as I can. He's running for it. He's yeah. in good spot. He's been ahead of Jan all day long, by the way, since the penalty early on on the bike ride. So no, Ben Hoffman's thinking. Not only my top American, I'm breaking through first time in top ten, first yeah. time in top five. Let's make it first time in the top two. Yeah. So Ben's not looking back. Uh, by the way, no smile on the downhill. No I don't blame him. We can and see folks, that later. Just to be clear, sometimes you ask questions just to hear yourself talk, and that's part of the reason I ask those kind of questions. But Ben Hoffman having a great race. But Tim Van Burkle, one of the best runners in the sport. We we haven't seen him on this stage yet have a great race, but man, he is in fourth place and he's only 75 seconds behind Jan Ferdino and right behind Ben Hoffman, so he's in a great position to maybe get on the podium. Andy Potts right behind him. Frederick Van Leer, as we said, is walking, but big movers. Uh, Bart Arnotes is now in ninth place. Pretty much guarantee he's going to move up a spot or two, but he's got some work to do to be able to do that. Mike Walsek still hanging in 10th place, but left hand turn uh, behind on the Kuakini Highway, Sebastian Keenly. He wears the smile. It's got to come soon. I mean, he's in a bunch of pain, but he can now hear Mike Riley. The helicopter's above him. He knows that his dream is about to, to come too. He's got a mile to go, but he looks like he's not in a place where you know Apollo Newby Frazier was back in the day when she had a, a collapse at the end or a Chris Lee. He looks like he's in control and he he is going to win this race. I saw an athlete come around this very corner and try and sprint for a position oh. from, from leaping from ninth to 
a hamstring cramp slow down oh yeah have to back it off and go and settle for nine so you don't start too early he's got a gap wait. though he's got he's a gap gonna, he, he's not gonna lose it i'm just saying he's not that he's just sort of coasting now on that yeah, free yeah. energy he's gonna make a right turn onto hualalai his last right turn onto ali'i and that's when i think basically everything just kind of goes numb you know you float in and th this happens for pretty much first all the way to last place coming down ali'i drive no matter what, there's just an energy. You guys talk about it. You've seen it. It draws a lot of these athletes in to race here at Ironman Kona. But, well, he's going to feel it supercharged. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, he, he knows. he's You know, this part of the race course, you know, I don't know if the athletes visualize this one so much or run it, you know, in the race mode all that much. It's the, the, the tougher sections of the course. Down Elite Drive, they're doing a bunch of runs down there, doing a bunch of runs up and back in the energy lab. But this section of the course, you know, it's usually busy. There's some traffic around. But this right now is the most beautiful piece of course he could ever dream of. You know, he's got uh, less than a mile to go till he gets on Elite Drive. And uh, he knows it, it's not going to take any effort at that point. And uh, it's a dream about to come true for Sebastian Kiwi. Well, it's a teaser, too, because you run this section <laughs> inside of one mile. So you yeah. cover this section, you have to ignore it because you're yeah. like, hey, I'll see you in 25 exactly. miles. Um, but, yeah, we'll see this guy around this next corner. And I think hopefully a smile breaks inside of that at least last 400 meters. But the guy has been a machine, oh. as Norman Stadler said, an absolute he did, machine. He, did. he slowed just when he needed to, just to take the fluids in, just to take the fueling in. Otherwise, this guy has been nothing, nothing anywhere near slow all day long. He's been flying. An absolute machine. Very impressive performance. Certainly turning any predictions that you or I had on our heads. This guy is winning the race right here, right now. Yeah, absolutely. And, and obviously, certainly not a surprise that he won, he's, he's going to win, you know, on paper with a fourth place last year, a third place. And let's not forget 270.3 World Championships. You can't do that if you don't have uh, the strength to be able to do well in Ironman necessarily. But, you know, he is an amazing, amazing cyclist. You know, he, the swim today for him, he was able to keep it within a distance where, you know, he had, he, he was able to, to, to run, to bike up to the front you know, with a certain amount of work, but it didn't take him any longer than the years before. So he actually, I think, had one of his best swims, if not his best swim here, because the conditions of that swim course and the rate at the, that those guys up front were pushing it, definitely a much more aggressive swim and an aggressive pace than there was last year at this race. Yes, and it was rough. I mean, the, the water was bumpy, as they said. It was, it was rough. It was choppy. So here he is. He is officially oh, man. on Elite Drive. The helicopter oh. is showing us. Mike Riley is, we're going to switch over to him in a minute. In just a second, this guy is going to cross the line as our Ironman world champion. It's an incredible thing to see this happen right now, but he is on the finish shoot. He is coming down to Lee. They have the screen up there. Mike Riley's seeing it. Uh, uh, he, he's sorry. He's, he's got one not more. on Ali'i now. He's, he's on Hualalai, and I jumped the gun. So that's why there's You're someone excited, running next man. to him. You're excited. Um, cool. But we will see this fella turn this corner here, and that puts him on Ali'i. The throngs of spectators should be the ones that alert me. Again, about to take this finish stretch. You can hear the drums. We've got yeah, a very close up. earshot to these um, Hawaiian. Uh, this presentation is amazing. This traditional yeah, unreal. Hawaiian unreal. Um, troop that comes on there. they got the flame dancing. It's amazing. I love it. No, great, great atmosphere. Oh, I think I saw a high five. You know, that might, that must have been someone he knew, someone that was rooting for him because he hasn't given it out to many. But uh, somebody got his ear, and now the right hand turn on Ali'i Drive, Sebastian Keenly, and we're gonna throw it down to uh, to Mike Riley. Well, not not quite yet. Mike's not quite ready for us, but we have Sebastian Keenly on one of the most hollow grounds in triathlon. I know, Michael. It doesn't. No matter how painful your race was, it doesn't hurt anymore, no matter what your position was when you were here. I think that's safe to say. This finish shoot, it carries you home. And so right now, we've got him within a couple hundred meters of the finish line. Sebastian Kienle from Germany <laughs> doing what he set out to do after a third place so last good. year. So good. Mike O'Reilly is calling for him. The people of Kailua Kona are calling for him. The folks back home also calling for him. This man from Germany he is coming here and he is doing the unbelievable thing of winning this race for the very first time. Perfect progression. He swam Perfect. great today. He biked unbelievably well. He distanced, him, distanced himself from all the two contenders. Yeah. He's running at home right now. He's soaking oh, it up. And he's going to have a great run split, too. You know, we sometimes look at that and we think he's just going to do it on the bike, but he had an amazing run split today. Absolutely. And this man, he deserves to be called world champion for the third time. This time, Ironman world champion. And he is coming home as soon as we get him across the line. Of course, we will tuck in and look at these women. There's that picture-in-picture. Picture. Obviously, 
last year's winner, Marinda Carfrey from Australia, absolutely motoring through the Energy she Lab. Is, Look at cruising. that footage, folks. She's cruising. Here Sebastian's he Sebastian's got his hands in the air. Marinda is motoring through the Energy Lab. What a beautiful sight here that we're bringing to you guys live. Yeah. Sebastian Kinley Man, coming he, home. He believes it now. He believes it. It's uh, Sebastian Kinley's day. He's under the tree that we all want to run under, and he knows he's going to win. Uh, he's put his arms up. He has started to celebrate. He has more than enough time to celebrate. Big arms up from Sebastian Keenly. One of the best performances we've seen in recent history on a very, very tough day on this course. But uh, Sebastian Keenly is right there, ready to go, ready to cross the finish line. And he's going to, I don't think he's going to rush this moment at all, Michael. Folks, right here, we got to say it. You have your 2014 Unreal. Ironman <laughs> World Champion coming across the line. This is from Germany, Sebastian Keenle, you guys, just let's take a moment and see this incredible performance come to fruition right there. That is absolutely phenomenal, folks. We are seeing this yeah. man celebrate with the German flag <laughs> high above his him. shoulders. What a moment, collapsing to the floor, earned it. He earned that fall, and what a show this guy has put on for us. Absolutely unbelievable result, and uh, Sebastian Keenly is the man. He's the focus right now. Uh, he has absolutely crushed this race. <laughs> Look at the joy on his face. But there's more, there's more joy and agony still out on course right now. Ben Hoffman has come through with one mile to go, 6.11 back. Back doesn't matter anymore. He Back from him is Jan Fredino, 32 seconds. And from what I've heard on course, Ben Hoffman looks better than Jan Fredino, but it's Jan Fredino. That guy can run a mile significantly faster than most Ironman athletes are capable of doing. So it just depends who wants it more right now. But there, we saw a lot of joy from Jan Fredino right now. This last mile is going to be an intense amount of pain for these athletes fighting for second and third, one of which Ben Hoffman. You mean Sebastian Kinley. You know yes, what? We saw sorry. a lot of joy from him. That's fine. You know what? I don't care <laughs> what your pedigree is. It's different story. When you're sprinting for the finish, second and third place, yeah. Ironman World Championships, the yeah. drive, Ben Hoffman is where my money is only yeah, because sure. he's got the momentum. He's got the experience. He's got harder legs. He's been through the mile. He's done 140.6 multiple times. You know what? I've been wrong many times before, but I'm thinking there he is. Look at that good. composure. Be good. Look at that strength. He looks amazing. He's shucked the hat. He only the has the high and tight. Got rid of his you safari hat, as they were calling it. This man looks incredible. He's on that finish. Uh, stretch down Kuakini. He still has to make two right turns before he gets the in there. I'm not sure if career. we're able to get footage get and get in there live to hear what Mike, Mike Riley's record, getting. And but we went would out love there to try. Sustained a run of Mike your Riley, life. take it away. I fucking can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought I'm gonna win this thing. Honestly. <laughs> Is it every year we get to just could have seen me uh, three out. weeks ago. <laughs> I was going up direction to Hilo, the saddle road. I had to cry and go in the car of my coach. I, I thought I couldn't even finish this thing. I was so close to just fly home and stop my career. But... Well, like, but, you persevered. But there you see, Never, never judge your life because of one bad day. Judge it because of the best day. Yeah. Sebastian Keenley, you are an Ironman World Champion! Yes! The lay symbolizing the spirit of aloha here. His girlfriend Tina, oh yes. He is in the 
That is beautiful. That's what you love to see. The world champion crown right there. Still some great action. We've got picture in picture. You see USA's Ben Hoffman holding that second very strong. The gap to third place, Jan Ferdino, has been very close. It's gotten yeah. even closer right now. The American has grabbed the flag. He knows he's top American. That much has been answered. What we want to know is, will he be second or will he be third? I think he's holding second. No, I think you're he's right. He's coming in hot. He's already, hey, he's already there. He's on a lead yeah, drive. He's on a lead drive. You're right. I mean, he's He's in the position right now. You know, Jan Ferdino has to rip it away from him. And we look behind him right now. It looks like he has more than enough gaff. Jan Ferdino is going to have to do something spectacular. But Ben Hoffman has been so strong and steady all day. Had a great swim. A very, very steady bike. Didn't put his nose out there early. Didn't do anything silly. Just as everybody else faltered, he continued to move up throughout the day. And Ben Hoffman, we know he's capable of that. He's been one of the best cyclists in the sport. One of these younger guys that's come up, one of the best cyclists in the sport. But he showed this year at Coeur d'Alene a 2.43 marathon. I don't care how much you've sat on the side of the road fixing a flat or tending to a competitor. If you run a 2.43 after riding 112, you are a class, class athlete. And he showed it. I cannot believe the jump that Ben Hoffman made. He's playing the role of Luke McKenzie today. He's jumping from 15th place all the way to second place. I knew he was going to make a jump. I didn't think it was going to be that big. American, first American in the podium for, for four years, five years now. Ben Hoffman coming across the finish line, waving the American flag. This is a dream come true. Second place, Ben Hoffman from the USA. Unreal. Now he's enjoying it. Now he's enjoying it. He believes it. He believes it. Man, unbelievable dream, dream wow. day for Ben Hoffman. Two champions congratulating one another. What the hell? That is awesome. What a tremendous day by both of them. And that's right, we've got Jan Fredino coming in third place across the line. This is our 08 Olympic champion. He's making his debut Jan in Kona Fredino here in style. Yeah. Also out of Germany, completing two out of three on the podium. Jan Fredino looking really good. Very happy to be <laughs> there. This guy did it. He did it well. He overcame adversary. Wow. And that's it. Third place. Eight hours, 20 minutes, incredible first time out in Kona. And, and you think you think an Olympic gold medal means something? This guy, this shows what the World Championships in Kona mean to an athlete. He just got his run down to Lee Drive, and it's for third place. This is the guy who's been the best in the world. You see the joy on his face to cross the finish line. Just shows what these athletes have to go through during this course and on this race to be able to succeed. Jan Ferdino, amazing, amazing debut to uh, two countrymen. This Hugging is beautiful it out. right here. That's Unreal. what it's all about. A little yeah. team. I mean, you got to feel good for your mates. And this guy won. This guy got third. He's wow. congratulating Ben Hoffman. That's the camaraderie. That's the, you know, respect, the mutual respect. Here we've got Andy, Andy Potts, Potts coming. Did he make it to four? Run. Oh, my goodness. Andy Potts pulling it off. We've got wow. two Germans, two Americans. This Unreal. is amazing. Andy Potts. Where did you come from? You've been there all day, long and strong. This is it. Andy Paz out of the USA. He's been top American before. Yeah, he's second has. American today coming across in fourth place. His Holy smokes. Yeah, his best finish. And I mean, I don't think we've ever, I don't know when we've seen the two Americans in the top five or top four. Andy, Andy Potts, amazing race, kind of just was there all day. You know, he put himself out there on the swim. What you know, we, he never was up front and the, on the bike necessarily too far up front, but he was there and he looked, he was taking his time in transition. He didn't look overly excited and maybe down a little bit, but man, he ran through and Andy Potts must have had a phenomenal run here today. I mean, that second through One more time place, so, Andy so Potts. tight. That is good stuff, man. Wow. I can't even believe it. I can, but I'm surprised that we've just got two Germans, two Americans. So yeah. we got Sebastian Kinley taking it home, Ben Hoffman in second, Jan so Fredino in third, and amazingly Andy Potts getting back after it, showing that experience that he now has the Ironman distance to take fourth place. Who knows? Maybe it's going to be uh, Tim Van Berkel in fourth, but maybe not. There Tim we go. Andy. Tim Van Berkel in fourth. This guy, Fields first time here Germany. in this race, and he got fourth place. I don't. Cyril Vino, is that Cyril Vino? 
Absolutely, oh. Cyril Vanille from France in fifth place, coming in right there. Yeah, These guys is, are so fast. That is not Tim Van Burkle. It's not, is it? That Nils is not, Rummel. Nils uh, Rummel. 38. Oh no. We're gonna get uh, that bib number from you guys. Sorry so much. There's got a lot of big, a lot of big movers here at the end of the race. Cyril Vanille. It's Cyril yeah, Vanille, 44. For fourth place, fifth place, Nils Firmhold, Nils sixth Firmhold, place, man. Tim Van Burkle. Wow. I mean, a lot of shuffling, Michael, in the last 10K. Tim there Burkle was, he put himself in there for a podium, right but that's right. We have Cyril in, four, in fifth place, Nils Firmhold in what sixth, shot, Tim Van Burkle in seventh place. Um, I'm going to go ahead. I'm pretty confident there. We've got our podium World taking a picture. One, uh, no selfies three. in front of the finish line there, guys. But, uh, man, great racing. Nils Frimhold looked one like he had kind of suffered there in the, the middle, but, man, he's right stoked on a top five him. finish. And, uh, yeah, here we go. Let's Tim Van Burkle with a seventh Australia. place finish. All wow. Right, great. I, I, I got to yeah. be honest, I didn't expect that out of Tim today. Um, but when we saw where he came off the bike, he's obviously been working on his bike on a really, really tough day like today. Tim Van Burkle, capable of blistering, blistering run, uh, run course, uh, and man, great, great race from Tim Van Burkle. And man, they're just coming thick, man. Last I mean, year's world champ, Frederick Van Leerda, coming in. He's looking good. That's that's the man that won last year. He's coming in wow. still a top ten performance. Eighth place will be the man from Belgium who won last year, Freddie Van Leer. I mean, how much more impressive is it to look at Sebastian Keeley's performance when we see how tight Frederick second Van place Leer. through this eighth place finisher is? All within, well within the gap that we had from Come Sebastian on, you can to do second better place. Than that for your I mean, that performance champion. that he had was unbelievable, and as you said, you can tell he is he's on the edge. He I went love it. it. You know what? You don't always see a Brady guy go David from first to seventh, first to today. eighth, because sometimes it's just not their day. They drop out. This guy he went, fought very hard yeah. to get to the win to repeat. He ended up eighth. Big respect for Frederick Van Leerde out of Belgium. Yeah, and that's, well done, a, and that's a race you can tell. You know, he had with, uh, you know, seven, eight miles to go, he had an eight-minute gap, and he he was going for the win still at that point. Absolutely. It, it wasn't a second-place finish or a third-place finish that he was looking at. He wanted to see what he could do to try to win this race, and uh, you have to have great respect for an athlete like that. And he has to go away with this eighth-place finish as a really top performance for him because – to crack like he did at one point and to be able to come back around and still was within just several minutes of top five, let alone a podium finish. Uh, unreal, unreal race from Frederick Van Leerd. Um, and just in a moment, we're gonna have Greg Welch with our our, our champion, Sebastian Keenley. Uh, but Michael, amazing, amazing depth of field here. Eighth guys with a, a really close, a close race up to first place. And right now we do have our champion, the guy who put them all to shame, Sebastian Keenley. All right, thank you very much, guys. Down here we have the 2014 Ironman World Champion. How does that sound, Serbi? Oh, absolutely awesome. I really can't believe it, honestly. I mean, of course, a lot of people had me on the list, and uh, I mean, I don't want to run around the, in the race week and tell anybody, no, probably it's not me, it's not me, but... You know, it's not that I wake up every morning and think, yeah, I'm the best, I'm the greatest, you know, what? I'm not the skinniest, I'm not the fastest, I'm not training the most. But, well, today I was I was the best <laughs> and I'm world champion. Unbelievable. Yeah, your third Ironman World Championship, two in the 70.3, and now your first Ironman Full Distance World Championship. Look, a couple of things. Let's talk a little bit about the injury in the last four weeks and then run me through your day, okay? First, a little bit about the injury. Yeah, I, I had troubles again this year a little bit with my Achilles, but you know, not really uh, really anything that bothers me. But to win this race, I think you 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 have to nearly have a perfect preparation. And uh, I mean, Frankfurt was absolutely great and a huge boost for my for my self confidence. But then uh, Canada, you know, I was tapered, I uh, I was prepared, and I it was not just a preparation race or something. I really wanna wanted to defend my title and I was really some, uh, somehow confused after the race because my legs were just not there and I, I just had a lot of doubts in the first weeks but I mean sometimes you just have to try to switch the head off and uh, just go and uh, I mean even the swim I, I could feel that the swim was very fast in the front group but um, I came out of the water with a couple of guys I really targeted uh, before the race and uh, I mean, I had a, a really decent swim, and uh, that was definitely the, the, the base for, for the success because I was with uh, with the guys like Luke McKenzie and uh, 
and uh, Marino van Hoenacker uh, and uh, Tyler Butterfield in the group that really helped helped that from the beginning and uh, yeah, at a certain point I could see uh, the first group and I just uh, went for it and, uh, and I, sometimes I'm not not thinking too much you know it's just uh, sometimes just, it's good not to think so much right yeah absolutely <laughs> just if you feel like it just go and uh, I went and um, uh, of course you have a lot of up and downs and uh, Frodo just uh, don't want to give me that feeling of really, uh, really beat him. Every time I race against him, he has a flat or a penalty. It's, it's, uh, it's uh, a little bit sad. But, don't worry. We'll, but, but, we'll we'll, we'll, but, but I think he's coming back next year. And then uh, I'll probably uh, borrow in some tires for me. And then uh, we'll, we'll get this thing sorted out. All right, mate. Well, congratulations again, man. World champion. Presented by GoPro today, mate. Unbelievable effort. Thanks. We'll see you a little bit later on the press Thanks. conference. All right, guys, we're going to go uh, straight over to Jan Fredino. You don't have to get up, mate. You can sit down. Jan, great race today. What is it with the flat tyres? Oh, I don't know what, what, what is going on. Uh, I had a mechanical before the start even, and somebody changed my wheel last minute. So I couldn't use the stuff I wanted to. But um, it just happens, you know. It's bad luck. But, um, you know, in the end... Seb, he was a reserve champion, yeah. he made it, he made the race, it made no difference to the result, and that's the important thing, Seb, he's the deserving world champion, what an awesome performance by him, yeah. but I can honestly say um, that was one of the best races I've ever done. Yeah, well done, mate, well look, you're a 2008 Olympic champion, we know that you're what, you know, what you're capable of doing, you're loaded with talent, today you had a great swim, you were right up in the lead of the swim all day, right up at the front of the bike until that happened. But on the run today, how did you feel? Did your nutrition work? And are you happy with your result? Well, you know, it's always a bit of a mental down when you when you get a penalty um, and you sort of, yeah, it's debatable with the young, young. What was the penalty for? Well, when I got the puncture, I pulled in straight away when I got the wheel and apparently there wasn't a gap. But um, it's one of those things, I mean, you have a mechanical, you get back in the race. Anyways, um, so after the four minutes I sat on the side of the road, I, I struggled, I struggled to get on and struggled to ride back. I lost a lot of time and the first half marathon was awful. It was just awful. <laughs> Honestly, I just wanted to pay respect to the champions and to this race because it's got so much prestige and so much honor. You have to finish it, you know, no matter what kind of day you're having. And But I guess in Ironman it's all about never giving up and fighting to the end and you have the best best race you've ever had even though you're not really feeling like it all right well the two germans have bookended the first uh, a couple of years today jan fredino in third place ben hoffman in second from the usa and our champion sebastian kinley also from germany having a fantastic day we're going to throw it back into you guys thanks so much greg appreciate it great great interviews down there we just saw romain guillaume come across the finish line this guy we saw three or four years ago coming coming up in the sport absolutely hammered the bike came on the run top 10 at the world championships unbelievable uh from romain guillaume we did see while, while greg was interviewing we did see an amazing amazing move in the women's race marinda carfrey popped up on the screen in third place a couple seconds later you see her run by uh, second place for second place, Rachel Joy. So unreal racing from Marina Carfrey. She she may do it again. I mean, she's there. We rolling. go. We've got her she's back. Rolling. Look at her go. And people are tweeting in. Can we get back there? We're back there. The women still rolling. We have Marinda Carfrey in second place. You can see Rachel in the distant background here of the shot. She's still very close, but Marinda Carfrey, the question was, does she have enough real estate to get there at the front? You know what? We don't know. We have to get some splits. We have to get some info from the streets. But right now, we do see the typical Marinda Carfrey doing her typical thing, which yep. is absolutely crushing her way through an amazing run split. So very good action here with Marina Carfrey, last year's winner. Yeah, unbelievable, unbelievable. And you know, it's it looks it looks similar as you said to what she was doing last year, but she's she's rolling. I mean it's obvious that she doesn't look at her pace, she just rolls. She goes as far as she can until she feels it's too much and it gets right right behind that and keeps going. And uh, and again we apologize for not getting uh, audio when we had that pass and but it happened so quick and it seems like communication up here, I know my cell is down so we're not really getting as much information from the field as we'd like to. So many apologies for that, but there's only so much we can control. But right now, Marinda Carfrey is absolutely rolling. And this is, this is a section of the course where we've seen her run 
so fast so many times before. And uh, Daniela Reef better be in a really, 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 really good position uh, for for you know just herself emotionally, nutritionally, energy wise. Uh, she if she wants to win this race, let's hope she's in a very, very good position. If she's struggling at all, she is is gonna get rolled by Marinda Carfrey, who looks at this point we see on the screen less than two minutes back. That right now, if you have to put money on it, for me it's hard not to bet on Marinda Carfrey. I mean she has so much momentum. She came off the bike over 14 minutes back, Michael. I know, and, that, and that's the motivation, obviously, that she needed, okay? So we said we knew she'd get on the podium. We had a very strong feeling. I, I just didn't foresee this two less than two minutes, yeah. and look where there she you is. Go, she's there still you got 20-something minutes of running, so this could easily end in her favor. Uh, job, she, she's doing great. She's running through this aid station, not taking the tactic of Kinlay to slow down, rolling through and grabbing stuff. Yeah. We would obviously love to keep this picture in picture, but we're going to look to what Mr. Second Place Ben Hoffman had to say about his incredible race today. Take it away, Greg. All right, thanks, guys. And uh, I tell you what, it was been a long time between drinks on the podium for the USA. And today, Ben Hoffman has brought it home. You know, he had a breakthrough run this year in Coeur d'Alene where he ran a 2.43. And today, he was strong throughout the swim, the bike, and the run, even with a very fast closing Yafredino. You must have been scared at the end there, Ben. Yeah, you know, Jan's a true champion, and he had me a little bit worried there at the end, but I just tried to focus on my race and uh, take care of the details at the end and uh, stay strong all the way to the end. You had a great swim. You hung in there for a great bike. We always knew that you were a great biker, but you hung with all the big boys today, and that was the I think that that was the moment that defined your result at the end of the day, especially running on a, you know, oozing confidence on your run right now. Absolutely. I mean, I came here prepared to run quickly, but the bike was the deciding factor, and... Uh, you know, I just tried to race my race and stay cool out there. Never got really excited, but just tried to be in the right spot at the right time and then push when it was necessary. And then, uh, yeah, you know, I rode really steady. I, I hit my numbers exactly, and I just felt smooth out there, man. It was uh, one of those days, so. Mate, you look like you can blow out 10 birthday cakes now. You don't even look like you've done anything. Well, that's a little bit misleading, I think. I'm pretty empty. I'm pretty empty, man. I gave everything I had, so. All right, an empty Ben Hoffman here, but he's not going to go home empty-handed. Let me tell you, he's going to take home $60,000 for second place at the Ironman World Championship presented by GoPro uh, tomorrow night at the awards party. Ben, congratulations, mate. Thanks so much, Greg. Appreciate it. Unbelievable result for Ben Hoffman from the USA. Back to you guys, you two Yankee doodles. Thank yeah, you, thank you, so, thank you Greg. Greg. Good thank stuff, and congrats to Ben. Big stuff. We're obviously looking at the difference here. We've got footage of Daniela Reef. She has obviously slowed dramatically, still fighting like the champion she is. But look at the picture of Marinda Carfrey, completely different. We've got yeah. Marinda running so hard that she's breathing, visibly breathing hard. That's what we're talking about here. Oh, that man. is moving. Yeah. So this is a different story than we saw five or 10 miles ago, like we talked about. No, absolutely. You can see the energy has come out of uh, Daniela, and she is she's, she's struggling out there. She's still running great. She's having a great marathon. And we're going to look at the end of the day, and she's going to have run a great marathon split. It's just Marinda. Carfrey is going to have run something ridiculous like she did last year and uh, unbelievable stuff and you know a great point from Ben Hoffman and uh, you know we talk about being a professional athlete Sebastian Keenly Ben Hoffman in response to that when he thought you know were you scared Jan Ferdino was coming that guy's such a class athlete no I just took care of the details you and know, that's nothing. It. That's what these girls need to take care of. Marinda Carfrey, she's running as hard as she can, but she is going to take care of the details and do what she can to cross the finish line first. For sure, because I think when Marinda faltered just behind Leanda Cave, she said, I didn't tend to the details. Yeah. She did not have the fuel that she needed. Right now, I guarantee you she's getting the fuel she needs. She knows, learns from the mistake, always a champion. So assessing what went wrong planning to make it better in the future. This girl is a champ. She's proven it two times over. Fastest girl on this course, getting it done today, chasing down the angry bird, they say, <laughs> Daniela Reef, our leader still today in front of Marinda Carfrey from Australia. Yeah, no, and she's had a, she's had a phenomenal race today to get to this point. And uh, right now, she's still in the lead. Anything can happen. Marinda Carfrey, if for uh, two more miles, she forgets about the details that she learned she needed to pay attention to a few years ago, Daniela is going to be right there again, right? So we can't take anything away from her, but I see a little bit of blue over her shoulder, and it looks like Marinda Carfrey is, is getting close. She's within sight. She's got a while, and right behind us, we hear Craig Alexander just cross the finish line. Uh, not sure exact place, but top 15 for sure for Craig Alexander. But as we look at the women's race, Daniela well, looks good, and it, it does look like that is, yeah, that's, that's her. You can see the behind. camera to the and, right, uh, to the she left. Is, you can see she's Marinda. Rolling. And when, when Rini gets that close, I mean, you can see how quickly she's making up this gap. I mean, unfortunately, at this point, no chance 
Lights no out. Chance. We've got Marinda no coming, oh. and, and Daniela's yeah, still going to fight. I would expect her to stay strong and continue very well. You but can't Marinda, respond to that. I, I won't say no chance, because this yeah. is what we were saying yeah. when we saw her close up on Leanda, but I will say this is a remarkable discrepancy here. Uh. A woman fighting to stay in front and doing an admiral job, and a woman chasing, chasing, chasing. The thing is, I'm saying she's going to get caught. I'm not saying that's the end. Yeah. I believe there's still a lot of fight to be done. Oh, a lot can happen. And you know, the, the, the person in the front of a race is always in the driver's seat. You never know how much effort the person that is chasing you put in to, to, to get there. I, it, to me, comes to mind uh, when we had uh, Andreas Raylert catch uh, Chris McCormick years back. And on the turn down Elite Drive, Chris McCormick said, shook his hand and said, thanks for coming out, more or less. And uh, he opened up the gas and, and that was it. But Marinda Carfrey is just such a class athlete. And she, right now, She's going to get to the front. As we said, she doesn't care if she's second place or third place or not. She wants to win that race. And right now, it's exactly where she wants it to be. And on a very, very tough day on the bike, you know, 14 minutes might, I thought she needed to be within 12. Within 14 minutes, I mean, she was right there. And Michael, let's talk about the men, the lead men didn't finish that long ago. No, I mean, these girls saying, are we're absolutely at, moving. We're looking at how close they are. They're very close, and they're going to be really, really close. So right now, right now, we see what Marinda Carfrey has been waiting for all day. Yeah. 14 minutes, 40 seconds from the lead off the bike. She has now made that, oh, one second. It's about to be zero. Yeah. This gal, she said it the other day, I was born for this race. She yeah. said, I was born to do this race. Right now, she's what, doing watch, what she does best, best, which is running. Good job. See you later. She has absolutely no problem continuing the pace. Rife has elevated her game, said, you know what? I'm a gamer. She's I'll trying. go with. I'll go with. She's but Rini is really putting on the afterburners. I mean, we're talking about an athlete that was, what, seventh place at the Olympics? So she knows how to move those legs pretty quickly, right? So she's going to try. You know, unfortunately, right now, Marinda Carfrey has more experience at this race. She's run just unbelievable run splits. And uh, already the, the gap is, is gone. And pretty soon we're going to see uh, Reef lean back a little bit. And that gap is just going to open up. And right now, again, the details. Daniela really needs to pay attention to the details because it was not long ago that Marinda Carfrey passed Rachel Joyce. And if she gets negative at all and doesn't focus on the things to make sure she keeps running well, Rachel Joyce is going to come in right where I picked her in second place behind Marinda Carfrey. Yeah, great. Good point. And so right now, Daniela Reef, she also tried to match that speed. So a lot of us know when we get past by an athlete, the athlete may be bluffing. The athlete may have elevated the pace, said, I'm going to just see what you've got. So Daniela matched that briefly, realized, oh, man, I can't call that bluff. i got to let her go for a minute. We're on an uphill grade now. I mean, Daniela still looks really good. She actually she looks better. That pass infused some energy into her, infused competitive spirit. I think she's running better now than she was, you know, 45 seconds a minute ago. But the bad news is she's no longer the leader. We now have our Australian defending champion, Marinda Carfrey, leading this marathon, drawing away from Daniela Reef. She is doing it right now the way she said she wanted to do it. She was built. For this race, yeah, it is. It, to me, it is. It is so impressive to see how the women have raised their game in the last five, ten years. I mean, you know, she's still going to come under nine hours. It looks like I don't have my miles 100% perfect, but on a windy day like this, where it's that rough of conditions, the swim was really tough out there, Michael. I was on the boat. It was really swelly, but also really rough, rough patches. Like it's really hard to get a rhythm. And for an athlete like Marinda, where she can get exposed in the swim against those tough athletes, she had a great, great race and she's going to have a super fast time. And we know we just, we know she's going to run sub, sub three hours because she always does. And that wasn't the case before. Right. And we're looking at, you know, Danielle is probably going to still run under a 305 or a 310. That's an amazing run split on this course in those conditions. And especially considering kind of the bike ride and swim that she had. I mean, they are so far ahead. I mean, every, everything changes, but it's great to see the type of caliber of athletes and how much they're pushing it. I mean, it, they're Marinda Carfrey did not care about anything but first place, and it shows with how she's racing. I'm here. so excited by yeah, what's going on right now. I don't even know what you just said. I tuned out. I was just well, staring at Marinda else, Carfrey. Everybody else Be has to. Because she just looks, I'm teasing, she looks great. It's amazing. So right now, as she closes in, we're going to we're gonna pull out and say that's about five and a half kilometers to go, 25 okay. minutes. We got the split screen. I'm looking at um, five and a half kilometers, three and a half miles. On the right, Marinda. On the left, Daniela Rife still fighting. What we don't know is where does Rachel Joyce sit? Is our podium still kind of tight or are we drawing apart? So she's climbing up right here a little. Uh, well, she's got a flat section. She's got a little hill yep. and then the second hill. So two more hills facing these athletes before they have to plunge down into 
our area here. Yeah, and this viewpoint is great, Michael, because we can see the road behind Daniela. So we're going to be able to see when Rachel gets, if Rachel gets uh, up a little bit closer to her. Again, uh, Daniela fidgeting a little bit, but wiping the sweat off her arms. But Rachel, Rachel is is trying her best. She, you know, we I expect to see her get closer. She's a fighter. Again, she wants to remain consistent. She's one of the most consistent athletes I've ever seen in this race as far as where she finishes. She doesn't want to take a step back. She's always been a move forward. She would be happy yes. with the second place, third maybe not so much, but right now, now Daniela is in that position and uh, you know she's going to hang on. She is such a fighter. I mean, let's not forget how long ago she was a uh, champion at uh, 70.3 World Not Champion. Not long ago. Yeah. And you know what? She holds that title. It's hers for a year. Yeah. But this is what I'm saying. Daniela uh, Reef, she got the boost by getting passed by Rennie. That hurt Rachel. So it really did happen. You can see it already. This is a whole different runner than we saw when she was out front. Yeah. She has regained her momentum. She has regained her stride. Her turnover, her up. Her head is up. Like, she was running on her heels. She was fizzling. She was deflating. Right now, this is a revived and recharged uh, Daniela Reef. She is back in the game. She's chasing Marinda. Unfortunately, she's in second now, but she's back in the game. So before slipping out. So bad news for Rachel Joyce. Good news for this gal that that pass happened. No, you make good points. And, you know, a lot of time, how long has Daniela been out front by herself? I mean, she hasn't had, she hasn't passed or been passed by somebody in hours upon hours, right? That can be a little bit boring. I mean, it's she, draining is what it is. It, it drains your mental no, reserves. It certainly is. And she's a professional. and She knows how to focus. But no matter what, when you're going through that much pain and there isn't another human near mm -hmm. you, dealing with that kind of pain, you feel like you're all, all all on your own, right? So she knows that Marinda Carfrey maybe is feeling a little bit less pain than she is, but now that, as you said, revived her, and she doesn't like how it felt to get past, and she's not just going to let it happen again. No, 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 and it's just a competitive, it's, you know, it's just the spirit that comes. It's yeah. just a competitive drive that comes. It's just you getting back in the game. It's just a snap of the fingers. It's a slap in the face. Call it what you will. It was getting past. She is running better now. It's also still what she probably knows hey, you know what? Miranda could crack. She's been running, yeah. what? She put 14 minutes into me? That could still crack, you know, and she's a well-trained, well-coached athlete that knows the fight isn't over until you cross that finish yeah, line. Yeah, she's so. raced long enough to, to, to know, as what you've said, you know, it's it's kind of like a poker match. you got to play your cards, and, and we know that at this point, Miranda's not playing really any cards, but you do never know if the athlete just accelerated to get by and, and Miranda thinks she's going to pass out at any moment. We, we've seen her do this before, so we know she's not, but Daniela is a smart athlete, and she knows to keep on the gas because anything can happen sure, you know sure. hindsight is is a terrible thing and when you cross the finish line you don't want to have to look back and be like oh man if i kept it up a little bit i could have won that race because somebody in front of me faltered well yeah and we have seen marinda falter so like it looked this good in 2012 until it didn't look good and so we have seen marinda falter uh, it doesn't look like it but you never know this is a fickle game people have failed in the last 400 meters. Paula Nubi Fraser was trying to win this race in 1995. She didn't make it past that turn at Hawalalai, yeah. you know, 400 meters Crazy. to go. So it does happen. I'm not predicting that. I'm just pointing out that this stuff does happen. Right now, we're looking at a defending world champion in her element, doing what she does best, which is run better than any woman has ever run the Ironman Marathon. She does it better than anyone. There's never been anyone that has either run those splits at this event or done it so beautifully. She has a, uh, an incredible command of this part of the race. Oh, and certainly not at the front of the race, right? We've had some athletes, uh, you know, have Kate Snow is an amazing runner. She always has great run splits, and I'm, I'm expecting to see her name pop up on the leaderboard, you know, at any moment. But Marinda Carfrey, you know, we all talk about her run, and obviously it's amazing, and, and she's she was born to run. You can see that in the way she, she strides. But her bike is so impressive. I mean, to lose 14 minutes, you think she, you know, she she got smoked on the bike, but she didn't. I mean, she she rode by herself for most of that day, 14 minutes behind. I'll tell you what, people, you cannot run a low 250 marathon if you're not good at riding a bike. And especially when you come off that close, you know, in the top 10 of a race like this. Marinda Carfrey knows how to ride a bike well, but she's small. You know, she's light. She can't put as much power in. She's, she's not going to be able to hold 30 miles an hour like some of the, the guys out there or some of the girls out there. And so she does an amazing job of biking super, super fast with 
what she's been given as an athlete, and then she just, ah, like, I never even did anything. I'm going to get off and run a 250 marathon. And, and she might be two, two, might be sub 250. We haven't seen the numbers yet, but it no certainly idea. could be a 248. I mean, the girl's doing it right, and she did it. Yeah, here we go. This is the last climb coming in. She's moved to the right side of the road. She's inside two miles, folks. She's inside two miles, just over the 24-mile mark. Uh, that puts her at about three kilometers, just over about three and a half kilometers to go. The girl is close. Marinda Carfrey, the champion, I should say, is close. She's done it twice before, and we're seeing it right now. She's coming up this hill, and the stride hasn't changed. This is a big hill she's about to face, and she's stride, stride has not changed one bit. No, it's unreal. It's, it's, I mean, is running hard for her? I mean, is it hard for her? I mean, I know she's working hard, but it seems like... It's I hard. Know, dude, man, it looks... She's ridiculous. It just looks like, like I said before, I hate to be redundant, but she was she was born to run. She has perfect body position. Her feet barely touch the ground. I mean, when you look at the athletes that she's passed, the time, you can see how much longer their feet are on the ground. Marinda Carfrey, it's like the bottoms of her feet are allergic to the concrete, right? Uh, yeah, like, exactly. as soon as it touches, it's gone. And, uh, you know, she... She, it's beautiful thing to watch. And talking to Mark Allen the other night, you know, he might change his mind today, but he said last year, Myrna, and he picked her to win, last year Myrna Carfrey had the performance, one of the best sporting performances he has ever seen ever in any sport. And I, I think that, you know, today she, she could overdo that. We don't know what kind of pace she's running, but today was a much harder condition. So what I'm talking about with Marinda being a great cyclist, losing 14 minutes, it, you know, it's easier for her to stay within reach on a day that's fast. Today was windy and it was tough, and it was tough for a, a, someone who's not natural, necessarily a natural cyclist or a small woman who can get blown around. So for her to have this kind of time in these legs after a bike like oh, that is sure. unbelievable. I mean, these, none of these women, they're all little women. Rachel Joyce is a little woman. Danielle yeah. Reef, she's a little woman. They're all little women. They're incredible. I don't think anyone in their right mind would say Marinda's not good on the bike. I think that's crazy sure, talk. Sure. It, it absolutely is. She's just Unreal. exceptional on the run. Yeah. You know, she's excellent at what she does, swim, bike. She's exceptional when she gets to the marathon portion of, of this race. Right now, we see Rachel Joyce. She still looks so she good, looks so really good. She's good. in third place, a bit demoralizing to come here and there, get past once, but she's hanging tough. She's fighting, about to approach this last climb as well she is still very much in control of her race and looking very good Rachel yeah I mean she is such a strong runner I mean it doesn't it doesn't look like you know every runner even we're into car phrase, she uses momentum a little bit but you can see her shoulders move a bunch and Rachel Joyce is just she's almost like a statue like her her legs are moving underneath her but her upper body stays so still and she's just so strong it's it's unreal to watch her race and to me, sure. it looks like she's in a better position than Reef is at this point. We don't know what the gap is, and we apologize for that. She's looking at her watch. She knows what the gap is. She can <laughs> see Reef in front of her. So if if there's any hope for her catching her, we're going to see her put down some really, really good effort in the next little bit. Sure. She's about 500 meters before the last climb, so yeah. she's just coming downhill before that final climb up. This is Marinda Carfrey cresting the top of the hill on the Queen K before she hangs a right. She's going to be allowed to cross over after this last cone, a last cone or two, cross over to the right side of the road to make that right turn and hang uh, hang that, that, that turn and go drop down the hill on Polani. Yeah. So she's dangerously close, just really cresting the hill. It's a long, flat top of the hill. Yeah, no, and she's, uh, you know, she's, they're in that zone where she's going to start, you know, hearing the helicopter up above her. She's going to see um, the turns that she's run so many times. And, you know, she, she has the opportunity. You know, she's run this in the lead so many times before. She knows what it feels like. She's now able to put pull back on the governor a little bit, right? Like, she's still running very, very hard. And Miranda Carfrey is not an athlete to ease up and jog it in. But she knows she can she can be a little bit safer with her effort. As you said, she, you know she can win or lose with her run. And at this point, she's won. She just needs to make sure she takes care of those details, common theme today, so that she doesn't lose it. And she goes through the the pro fluids area, gets a uh, gets some water or some fluid that she put down for herself. Something that you know that's a really good thing yeah, that we do. So stolen great. that sort of from the marathoning world, yeah. the elite running world. It's a great thing. It allows these athletes to have the fluids that they're used to, a bottle or a gel that they're used to. So grab that there in that last station before you drop down the hill. Good, another sensible. So you said it, she's tending to the details. She's yeah. not going to skip that. No. Hey, you know what? She's in the lead. Maybe I'll just skip it. No, 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 not this girl. She's going to make sure that she's got a full tank all the way to the finish uh, line. Two, a miles, true two miles to go, three miles to go in this race is still a really, really long way, right? Anything can happen. And, you know, it is kind of brutal that the race ends, you would think, downhills, awesome. 
but it is brutal that this race ends with a, an extreme downhill with a mile to go because that does crazy things to your legs. Someone like Miranda Carfrey, who's so lean forward, she probably isn't going to feel anything. But it's uh, you got to be on the edge when you're running down a hill like that. You can't you can't slow down. You got to let it go. So you know you have to take care of yourself so that that hill doesn't impact you in a negative way. And Miranda Carfrey is doing that. The little things, and we talk about it so much. Nutrition is the fourth discipline, and people probably are sick of us talking. Period. But nutrition is so important and it really is it's the athletes i guarantee you every athlete that you talk to today that had a bad day is going to talk about nutrition going wrong and their pacing going wrong and marinda carfrey <laughs> has done all of those things correctly uh, funny enough that i think the nutrition often is so tied to the pacing i mean nutrition yeah. is a if your nutrition goes bad you got to first look and say i screw up the pacing because the pacing causes your nutrition to go yeah. poorly even if it's well executed nutrition so yeah. marinda again hitting some fueling at this aid station as she crests the hill again doing a very smart thing knowing that she needs to top off before she makes that final charge to the finish line. Um, you know, I like, you hit Polani, like you said, it hurts your feet, it hurts your quads, it hurts your knees, it hurts a lot of stuff. But for Marinda right now, she's going to enter that blissful state of all the pain kind of starts to go away. She's close enough, she knows she's doing it, and she's realizing, you know what, this is my championship. No, absolutely, and uh, you know, this is... God, she's still got the hill. She does. She does still have the hill, but uh, it's not going to be. That's not going to be trouble for her. But uh, this is a, a reminiscent position for her to be in. Marinda Carfrey, um, you know, she's not one that's going to think about the finish line until she gets, you know, on that right turn down Elite Drive. She does not. She has a lot of respect for the athletes that are behind her. A ton of respect for Reef. A ton of respect for Rachel Joy. She's raced her before. She knows that that is one tough, tough lady. So Miranda Carfrey going to maintain her focus and uh, do what she needs to do on a course that's very familiar to her. And at this point, take care of the details, run fast. Um, again, I don't have, we don't have a bunch of information right now. We apologize for that. Um, but I, I can't wait to see what the run splits are for her, um, you know, I think she's going to be close to that 250 again. I don't think she's running quite as fast as she did last year. Um, she looked like she was uh, a, a more aggressive last year. I mean, she's having maybe a better run than she did last year. Just the pace is different. It's right? amazing to, to think that. I mean, she, she looks great. And, and, here, and here's Reef again as we look at her still looks to be ailing a bit, looks to be really feeling the burn and the pain of her first Ironman World Championship effort, um, and that's a good thing. That means she raced really well. She's leaving it all on the course. So that is going under uh, Makalapua light. So we, I have to admit, I miscalled earlier exactly where they were. I got a raw, the wrong 1020 on that one. So now she's under that last light. She's doing the climb now that Marinda is also already on. Yep. So these athletes are a little bit further. They were a little bit further back than initially thought. Now they're entering into that. So now they're, she is, uh, Reef is in side of two miles with Marinda at the top of that hill. So now looking at that, and, and you're much more familiar with this course uh, than I am. Whenever I've gotten to this part of the marathon, I can't see anything. So uh, we'll defer to you a little bit. But now looking back, when you thought Rachel was significantly behind Reef because of where you thought those two were, do you think that she's close? Oh, she's very tell? close. Oh, yeah. she's very close. So when we when you know, we're looking at these, if they're live shots, which we know they are, Reef is right here on the hill. We were seeing Rachel come down from the, the traffic light. She was coming down the hill into Makalapua. She's still, I mean, I'm saying half a mile. I'm saying maybe, um, not even, probably 700 meters. You yeah. know, but so do the, the math. I mean, it's two and a half minutes, uh, three minutes. I think she's gaining, but I don't think she's, you know, got enough. I'm not sure. We'll see. Um, yeah, look at right, on the left side. Rennie, Miranda Carfrey, that lean. She uh, she's tired, but she knows how to run up a hill fast. And she is uh, she is leaning forward, Michael. She's not erect. She's leaning forward. Man, look at the, the picture I know, on the left. We're gonna argue about this. All. I'm looking at the picture, and there's an angle. But anyway, she looks she looks awesome. Uh, either way, she's she's running beautifully, and um, she's not gonna be slowed down by any hill. Her light stature, uh, she's gonna pump up it. But you know, you look at uh, Reef and. We've got nothing else to talk about, so I'm going to say, you we know, do. We, we've, we've figured got out exactly how to improve your run form. I know, right? Your runs running right by keeping you more and erect, allowing we, you to have you better feel, hip you, you guys probably feel. I'll pick myself apart all day long, but Daniela Reef, you can see her foot contact time is just longer on the ground than Marinda, and that's 
you know, that in the end is what's going to make you run faster or not. And she is doing a phenomenal job. So no way am I taking anything away from her. But looking at things, we're looking at two screens. You can see that her feet are just on the ground a little longer. And I think maybe a little bit more so than Rachel Joyce. But she looks really good, Michael. I mean, she's she's got great arm swing. She's pushing well. She. It, her form has not really changed since I saw her running in transition. Yeah, a little bit. You know what? She's willing herself up the road right now. She's a true champion, and this yeah. is a fighter right down to the to the end. She's running a little bit uglier than she was before. I see a lot of fight. That's what you got to do. Yeah. She's hurting. She's willing herself up that mountain that is just a hill. It's a mountain. It feels like a mountain. Rachel Joyce also in a spot where she can look up the road, sees a camera in front of Daniela. She's obviously got one in front of her, but she sees that camera. It's a marker. She knows exactly the gap. She's thinking to herself, I can still close this gap. I'm close enough. I can see yeah. this girl. Yeah. She's been out there dangling all day long. I can still see her. I wonder what I've got in my bag of tricks and my experience that I can pull a trump card on her. Yeah, and at this point, you know, we do, I did just say that the athlete that's in front is in the driver's seat. But I think at this point, Rachel Joyce, she can see the athlete. You know, Daniela's getting splits every now and again. She might be getting spectators yelling what they think the gap is to Rachel Joyce as she runs by, but those are inaccurate. Rachel Joyce can see Daniela the entire time, and she knows this course. You know, Daniela obviously is a professional, has been around this course, and has made sure she knows every bit of it. But Rachel Joyce knows the course, like the back of her hand, and she knows how much it hurts the last little bit, and she knows that if she puts in the effort, she can bring back almost anybody within that distance, right? But she's going to have to work for it. And on the left side of our Great screen, point. we're looking at uh, Miranda Carfe striding out, that little stature, but a long stride as she runs down that hill. You see all the water from all the aid that people have been getting on the way down, and uh, she's still taking aid. I mean, how often people think, oh, you're within a mile, I'm not going to get anything. We, we saw this with Andreas Rayler a couple years ago. He grabbed like 18 cups of water on this last hill, and Miranda Carfe grabs three as she goes down. She's not taking anything for granted. She still has a lot of work to do. This is what she does for a living. This is her dream, and she's not going to let it go with a stupid mistake by not drinking enough water in the last mile. For sure, and this is really and truly unbelievable. The most impressive thing I've seen all day is this 14 minute, 32 second or 38 Unreal. second deficit has been erased. There's a gap now. So much this woman has too. done what she does best, which is the Ironman World Championship, yeah. swim, bike, and run. She's absolutely put it together to have those time deficits and keep the composure mentally, to hear what they're telling you, to hear, oh my gosh, these girls are getting away, to come off the bike so far down, a number of women between you and the lead. It's, it can be devastating to the wrong psyche, to the wrong mentality, yeah. not Marinda Carfrey. And here we go, turn, taking a right-hand turn down Polani as well as Daniela. So she's, she's running really well. I mean, she has not lost more than maybe a minute to Miranda Carfrey. So Miranda's running really well, but so is Daniela. As you said, you pointed out, Michael, I think she got a little bit extra energy. And before she turned down that right, we had a great camera angle behind the road behind her. And I did not see Rachel Joyce anywhere in that last 500 meters or with 500 meters. Oh my meters gosh, she's already at the bottom. That's yeah. fast. She went down that hill faster than Sebastian. Check it. I guarantee it. She's <laughs> all the way at the bottom. She's on Quikini. She did a very casual look to the left which is smart. You look to the left, you're not looking back, you're looking to the left, but she's checking behind her. She didn't see Daniela. She says, I've broken her. I'm good to go. I'm on the last stretch. I'm a mile to go, one mile, approximately 1,600 meters. She's in the finish zone. The energy yeah. is pulling her in. She can hear our speaker. She can hear Mike Riley. Thankfully, she can't hear you or me, but she knows <laughs> she is within, within reach of winning this third world championship title right here. Yeah, unbelievable. Kyler's and I mean, if we weren't talking about it before, you know, it's hard to, to not put her name up with the best that have ever raced this race. Three times, you know, her name goes right next to Polly newby Frazier. Her name goes right next to Chrissy Wellington. Um, she's, she is now, if not that she wasn't before, she is absolutely concreted herself as a legend in this sport. And she already had the fastest run splits out here, and you know she's going to add to, you know if you're going to look at the top 10 run splits ever on this course, it's going to have her name a lot. Well, fastest overall time too, course record yeah. set last year, so it's pretty good. You take you know an unbeatable, never lost Chrissy Wellington, you beat her record. That's good stuff. Yeah. So right now, Marinda Carfrey, she's overtaken a few of these people that are obviously either finishing in the men's age group race, or they are folks just that are just starting, probably not this guy's pretty well. But so, right uh, we've still got Reef on the downhill. Daniela coming in second place from Switzerland. She's coming down that hill. It's still super close, as you said. But Marinda's got it locked up. I mean, I can't believe the rate at which she is covering this terrain. 
Definitely We're in a car fray. It's about 90 Probably seconds in front of me. Faster than Mr. Kimei. Does that matter? No. It's just a neat thing to say. Look at this girl go. That is neat, Michael. And uh, you know, you look at Daniela. She had a great. She had a great to run down Pilani as well. You know, she has that foot speed. And you know, I don't think over the last mile and a half, she's really lost much time to Marinda Carfre. She's regained herself. She's able to put the nutrition in. You know, those the things that she's learned over her Ironmans that she's done, um, and what she's heard from others that have raced this course specifically. She's obviously listened, and she's been sure that she has the energy at the end of this race. And she used that uh, foot speed that she's had from years past in uh, Olympic distance races with a seventh place at uh, the Olympics. Uh, you know, great, great race from her. And Marinda I mean, Carfrey, she does not have, does not have long ago. No, I mean, this girl also good foot speed. We saw her get mm -hmm. second place in high V. I mean, yeah. she's got short course speed as well. Came from that background, did it for a little while, found 70.3, told us all, you know what, I was made for this race. And that's pretty exciting to hear. She said, I love the idea of, of three. I bet, you know, pretty soon we'll start hearing her talking about four. Um, she could jump up there and match Chrissy Wellington. It's, it's kind of crazy. You know, this gal, she just is owning, absolutely owning this marathon course and really just delivering such a punch onto Huadalai, coming down the final block here into uh, where she'll be on Ali'i Drive and yeah. really taking it home as a champion three times over. No, she's right there, and uh, oh, she did a little fist just, bump. Yeah, she just had uh, she just had an acknowledgement. She's happy. Uh, she knows where she needs to be, and that's uh, a couple hundred meters down on Elite Drive. So this is good stuff, folks. As she rounds this right turn here onto Elite Drive, we have our soon-to-be three-time Ironman World Champion Marinda Carfrey taking bows from people that are on the race course. She's overtaking these folks that are that are there on course with her. These guys are, some of them finishing, some of them are starting the beginning of their marathon. But this gal, Marinda Carfrey, a leader on the day, is absolutely moving. Look back, I'm not, I, I do not doubt. No. She looked back, I don't blame her, I don't doubt. I would do the same if I were her. Anyone would in their right mind. Protect it, make sure a high five, and you're on Ali'i Drive. This is it, I guarantee you. She's soaking up every inch and every ounce of yeah, energy. But, I mean, she's definitely put the energy out there. She's looked back twice now uh, to see if somebody's close behind her because she's been hearing, I'm sure, if she's got good supporters and good fans out there, hey, she's still there. You don't have a massive gap. Um, so all that means is she's worked hard. She's really tired. She wants hey, to make sure she doesn't lose right now. Don't she, lollygag. Yeah. And she's not. She's running it in. This is the fourth female ever to win three titles. Marinda Carfrey doing that after Natasha Badman. Uh, Natasha Badman, Paula Newby Fraser, as yep. well as Chrissy oh. Wellington. No, she's not across the line, folks at home, but Still she is back. in the lead. Looking back, checking her lead. I bet she's got a wicked sprint if someone came up on her shoulder. This gal is amazing, and you're absolutely right, folks. You've rooted for it. You've cheered for it. Good stuff coming. Oh, yeah, unbelievable stuff from Miranda Carfrey. You know, as you said, uh, as our graphic says, fourth female to win three titles. And by what she's done today and how she's done it, uh, she's going to win some more. You know, she it took an athlete putting it out there completely to even get close to trying to beat her. Miranda um, Carfrey, she does not she does not screw around, and she's going to be back up here again. But today. You know, she another great, a great marathon split from Rinda Carfrey. She grabs the Australian flag. She's absolutely stoked now. No more look, looking back. As soon as I say that, she's going to look back. But Rinda Carfrey under the tree. You know, she's going to, the big celebration that we get for Kona is coming around. Uh, Mike Riley is going to be grabbing uh, the audio from us here in a second. Looks up to the sky in disbelief. But here you have 2014 GoPro Ironman World Champion, Rinda Carfrey. Go, go down to Mike Riley to hear what he has to say as he brings Miranda Carfrey across the finish line. There she is! Your 2014 Ironman World Champion, presented by GoPro from Australia, Miranda Carfrey! Simply unbelievable! Oh, she knows what that's like, putting that wreath on. Marinda Carfrey! Oh, my goodness.
I'm not gonna wake her. I'm not gonna make her walk back up here. Her coach, Siri Lindley. Come here, girl. They want to hear from you. <laughs> So, you came out of transition 14 and a half minutes down, and you know there were a lot of good runners in front of you. Girls you knew and knew they had some good running talent, but you just kept putting the pedal to the metal. Honestly, I, I have no idea how I got that done. You know, I, I came out of transition 14 and a half down, some quality runners ahead of me, and I just was like, okay, top five would be good. And then I got to top five, all right, top, th top three would be great. And then I got to top three, and first was in, in uh, sight. I think this is It is Daniela Reef. What a great day for the Swiss. Second place. Oh, Daniela, bowing to the crowd. Talk about putting it all out there, everybody. Daniela Reef, congratulations. And that is a close finish still. Uh, they had me running scared the whole last uh, four miles. I think I caught Daniela around then, and I would have liked to have relaxed. <laughs> but there was no chance of that. Those girls are tough, and they were never going to give up. So I, I knew that going into this race, I knew it would be a battle to the finish line, and I'm, I'm just absolutely shocked that I was able to get it done today. Well, that, the first victory you had, the second victory you had, and now this victory to defend your title with that target on your back, the pressure is off. It's amazing. Yeah, that defending is harder than anything. Honestly, you get second or third, and you're hungry all year for that win. You get first, you kind of think you're the king of the world for a bit. And then um, you realize there are a lot of solid girls hunting you down all year. And uh, yeah, you just got to get the work done. I got to give it to my coach. Third place Ripley. finisher, Rachel Jones. And here comes Rachel. Such a close women's finish. Rachel Joyce from Great Britain. <laughs> Such gracious, gracious champions. You've got the best in the world right in front of you. Let's hear it for them. There they are. There's a picture for the Asia. Yes, it is. We're in the cafe, Daniela Reef, Rachel Joyce, your top three. And one more time, Marinda, you are an enemy. World Champion! Let's welcome That was Philip incredible, Oscar Matt. You had a split about a minute 15 is what we saw for that third place finish of Rachel Joyce behind Daniela Reeve. Those women were so close and were peeking in there at another person across the line. But really, uh, I mean, just amazing. What an incredible, and Marinda said it, she came off in you know 14 and a half minutes down and hey, maybe see if i can get fifth place yeah that's a champion's attitude there i'm still in it and then assess yeah. and re reset the goal i'll go for third now um I'll okay just third was pretty good let me see wait a second there's second first i'm in i mean that's just what it takes to really get it done all three of these women uh, well, that hit that podium had it i mean 
Daniela Reef to lead all day long like that. Yeah. Immense pressure. Rachel Joyce to just be battling it out with these two foes all day long. You know, Rachel Joyce, it's just a matter of time till she ends up winning this race. I mean, she is so steady and so consistent. And, uh, you know, we had those three women all under 903. Um, or under 904, excuse me. That's that's amazing on such a windy day a windy with day. such tough. I mean, the conditions in the water were brutal. So you add all those things up, that kind of finish time uh, shows you the class. And as you said, Marinda Carfrey, she's such a humble, humble champion. And uh, we say that sometimes when they're not actually, but she was such such a humble champion. And Don't forget to subtract yeah. that start time. So yeah. you've got age group times you're reading. Oh, These girls wow. are, are uh, pro men. So they're 854 for Marinda, 856 for Daniela, 857. Good stuff. Yeah, great stuff from those ladies. Okay, and that's it. We were just reading the splits. We were looking at the footage. We were looking at our, our handhelds trying to come up with the data. And what we saw was that it was 2 minutes and 59 seconds from first place to third place. Crazy. That's such a tiny margin. These women really pushed one another to the limits. And that's where you get these exceptional performances. That's what Ironman Hawaii is all about. And we got to see it here live. You guys got to see all this action back home. I hope you had as much fun as we did. Wow. Yeah. I mean, now you've still got champs coming across the line. Um, right here, of course, Daniela Reeve getting a little hug from the... Uh, friends and family yeah. out there in the, in the stands. No, I mean, she she has to be ecstatic with that performance. Obviously, there's a little bit of disappointment because she didn't win and she was in that position for so long. But to come to the World Championships uh, your first time and get second place in that fashion all by yourself all day long. And I guarantee you, Marinda Carfrey, when she's by herself or when she's with her family, she's going to say, I didn't believe I could do that today. <laughs> and uh, if you put her in that position, that means you are quite a champion. Oh, my gosh. Marinda Carfrey, guess what? She shaved 12 seconds off her record 250 26 no way she went 12 seconds faster than last wow. year wow only for nerds like us we love that stuff wow. um really good it wouldn't have mattered if they had said 259 because we saw what she did but 250 26 it won't be long before that girl edges oh, under 250 on so this course close. with the conditions today for her to be able to improve on last year i mean it, I, unfortunately we, we can't have a we can't have a camera everywhere but she must have been that middle section of the run course when she told herself, oh, you know what? I can get top five. Oh, you know what? I can get top three. She must have been absolutely hooking in that section because she looked good when we saw her when she took the lead, but she wasn't like textbook 100% going crazy Miranda Carfrey, but there were some fast, fast sections of that run course for her. I crazy. I was, I was intimidated crazy. and impressed all wrapped up in one, so <laughs> I felt like it looked good. And you know what? So that's it. That's the blueprint. We know now to, to not ever question that yeah. a 250 is in the tank. And where I see it, I honestly, I have to focus on the mindset that a champion, a three-time Ironman world champion like Marinda, yeah. took to the table. It was the mindset. It can be devastating, but she overcame all that. Yeah. Let's listen to what second place Daniela Reef has to say with Mr. Greg Welch. Take it away. The uh, 2014 Ironman World Championships here being kind of presented by GoPro and I can tell you right now, Miss Daniela Reif has had the race of a life, Miss Daniela Reif. Um, today, Daniela, great swim, even impressive and even more better uh, bike ride today. But the run, bit of a struggle, but second place in your first, um, first go around. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Yeah, it was uh, very tough out there today. I gave everything I had. I, I was actually, uh, had a bit of a shocker in the swim. Um, I thought I was <laughs> more back, so I was glad it was only two minutes. Yeah. I gave it all out on the bike, and after 30K on the run, I started to really bump. I thought I'm not going to make it back, and then um, had some food and came back. But um, yeah, when Rini passed, I just, I tried to hang on, but she, she had a fantastic run today, yeah. and um, well done to her, and I'm, I'm really happy with my race. Okay, Daniela, we're going to let her go. She's a little bit hungry right now. She needs uh, get some nutrition into it. Congratulations, Daniela, and we can't wait to see you again next year. Well done. All right, Daniela Reefa, she was amazing out there today. I mean, she said that she had a bit of a shocker on the swim, two minutes down, but she biked her heart out today, left everything out on the Queen K Highway, came up just that much short of Marinda Carfrey taking her third victory. Going to send it back to you. We're going to come back at you in about one or two minutes with uh, Rachel Joyce. We'll send it back to you. Thanks so much, Greg. It's really cool to hear these words coming straight from these uh, podium women. It's amazing, and we do definitely want to hear exactly what Rachel Joyce has to say, fighting so hard all day and ending up again on the podium. Uh, Matt, you said it. It's no fun to slip back, but she only went from second to third. She's still, still very much on a good trajectory, oh, Rachel. Oh, for sure. As well as Daniela Reef. I mean, coming in here as a rookie, I bet she learned so much. 
Oh, absolutely. You know, she learned a lot. Uh, but as you said, Rachel Joyce, you know, I haven't seen, haven't gotten a hold of her run split yet, but she had just as solid a race as she's ever had. And she was aggressive, but wasn't silly. And here we go. Jody Swallow looks like, unless we miss somebody, is our fourth place finisher. So I think, Jody I think Swallow. We did, because I saw one time wondering if we've seen Kate Snow yet, can we get a little data for this? Because that girl's out there tearing it up. Yeah, Where no, absolutely. Everyone? We're going we're gonna to get some splits for y'all. But uh, right there, as far as we can tell, um, we had Jody Swallow come across the finish line. Um, and what I saw was fourth place. It could have been fifth, but uh, great race from her. I mean, she was, you know, she was up front pushing the pace all day. She didn't have a perfect day, but nobody has a perfect day. But she was at least able to maintain uh, her positivity at a certain point and was able to bring it back around and have a super solid. I mean, if you can get top five in this race, um, you know, for someone that, you know, there's been times where she doesn't do all that well in really hot, hot conditions. And uh, she was out there pushing the pace all day, and she had a very consistent and solid race. And you got to take your hat off to Jody Swallow for that performance. Well, especially because I think when you when you put yourself in a category of someone that races from the front, you take that away. So yeah. Jody Swallow thrives and lives from the front of the race. She loves that. I mean, it's taken away via that, that, that sideline action that she received. Um, it, it's, it's hard. you got to regroup and start a new plan. So she did just that. And here we've got, it looks like, um, Liz Blackford. Is that right? Coming across the line. We've got a yep, that's no, right. no, Caroline, Caroline Stefan. Oh, my wow. apologies. My wow. apologies. And it looks what like she champion. she put herself out there today. She looks like she's uh, she's hurting a little bit, but she's got a smile on her face. She had a, she had a great day. I mean, she was never really off the front or, oh, get, yeah, there she goes. She's, she's, uh, she's struggling a little bit, but she had a very consistent, very steady day. And I think we're going to look back, and this might be one of the better runs she's had on this course. Probably so. She is so good, this woman, just so well-rounded. I mean, she came in and lit him up at Melbourne at the uh, Asian Pacific Championship, and, and she's just got so much skill and, and determination behind her. Um, we're going to really look forward to seeing how her race played out later. But in the meantime, we'd love to have Mr. Greg Welch talk to us with Marina Carfra as well as Rachel Joyce. Take it away, Greggy. All right, thanks, guys. Um, yeah, so what can be said about this young lady right here, Marinda Carfrey, and wonderful Rachel Joyce? You, you were Michael Lovato's pick, by the way. Uh, <laughs> had to mention that. Marinda, you came from a deficit of over 14 minutes down today to claim your third Ironman World Championship. I know you're emotional right now. I am too. I absolutely love you to death. And uh, it was just great to see that fighting spirit. Five foot two, you grew up as a basketball player, and now you're queen of the world. You're like this magnificent Godzilla or something out there. You pack a punch for a little girl. Let me tell you right now, got to be proud. Three times a champ. Thanks so much, Welshy. Um, I don't know how I got it done today. Uh, Rachel Joyce and, and uh, Daniela Riffer, just all class. They were way out there on the bike. They put it out there. They laid it out there. And the first half of the run, I really didn't take much time back. And I just kept trying to be patient. and and just focus on the small things, pick off one girl at a time. And I, I, don't, I don't know how I got it done. Um, I'm surprised that I got to see the, those girls. I thought they were well gone off the bike. And I would have been happy with the top three, but um, first in the world again, I, I, can't, I can't quite believe it. <laughs> well, we can believe it. It's, it's the fighting spirit of a champion. A champion always know, knows how to claw back into a race. You're hung tough. Congratulations. Three times a champ. We'll see you tonight at the press conference. Well done. Thanks so much, Wilsey. I appreciate it. All right, Marinda Carfrey, what a great effort by Marinda today. It was unbelievable what she did. And this young lady here, you know, for the last couple of years, she's always one of the first out of the water. She's always one of the first on the bike. And today, you hung tough. What was most impressive about your race for me, Rachel, was the way that you handled yourself on the bike ride today um, in second place for most of the day today. Did that set up your finish today? Um, yeah, I mean... You know, I knew when you've got someone like Renny behind you, you know, you, you the bike's one of my strengths. And um, I was really happy to see the field was broken up more and it was there was a bit of wind out there. So um, I much prefer to see people having to work on their own, which is how it worked out. Um, and then I got onto the run and I just felt shoddy for like the first 10 miles. And, uh, I was like, I'm going to have to pull my socks up because <laughs> Rini, uh, Daniela was gapping me more and I knew Rini would be chasing hard. Um, so, you know, I, I have to be proud of my race. I, I left it all out there. But, um, yeah, Rini's a class act. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you got a little bit of a bruiser up there today. You must have got hit in the, uh, in the swim oh, early. The, the, the swim was rough. I, I got <laughs> dunked. I got a foot in my face. Uh, so I was pretty happy. I like... 
I, I kind of missed that first group after taking yeah. a bit of a smashing on the first couple of boys, but then I got out in front of the second pack and I felt much more comfortable there. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, so the boys and I were saying that this is the most competitive women's race in a long time here, and especially how many great swimmers were in this race today and great bikers. Did you see the same? Yeah, I mean, I, having seen Daniela rip it up all over on the Ironman and winning Montreal, I knew she would be strong. And I was, I was happy with how I handled myself on the bike. She, she took quite a bit of time off me around Harvey, but I started to claw some of that back in the latter stages. Um, she's a she's tough and she ran strong and uh, yeah I, like I was starting to catch her a little bit towards the end of the run but uh, I ran out of pavement. <laughs> <laughs> you did run out of pavement but an incredible podium again Rachel we'll also see you tonight at the press conference yes. and for you two knuckleheads in the studio this is how you speak the Queen's English. Yes. Back to you. We've got Andrew Messick coming up in a few minutes for a major announcement, but back for you for now. I thanks you, thanks I for the lesson, Greg. I appreciate it. I tell you it. what, you just let Rachel know that she's teaching me all the time, lesson past lesson. It's not just the Queen's English. So good stuff. And we are working on our pronunciation, our enunciation, our clarity, as well as our accuracy, because we sometimes <laughs> mess things up. So folks at home, remember that. And thank you for bearing with us, because we too make mistakes. It's hard to believe, but it's true. And also... Uh, just for the, record, for the record, I want you to know, we put our predictions out there and we often strike out. We fail miserably, but that's part of the game. We're not afraid to say we were wrong. It's yeah. part of the game. It's part of the fun. I mean, I was pretty right on the women's field. <laughs> I, I picked the winner. I picked third place, but I picked her second. But I uh, had first, had second, first, second, third, two, Matt, but no, you, you know totally what? Lost. Not in the right order. And here we so have anyway, another finisher. I think that's Liz Lyles with a great, a great finish. <laughs> Sorry to, to interrupt, but I think that's a seventh place finish. Seventh place Liz, Liz Lyles, and you know she's really good. Second place also in Frankfurt this year at the yeah. Ironman uh, European Championship. She can really motor on the run. Yeah, she had a great. She, I think, what her best swim performance I've seen. She had a great swim today, staying with some fast, fast women, and obviously a great run to finish out the day. But uh, we might have missed one or two crossing the finish line. But I believe, from what we heard, Mike Riley, I believe that seventh place. But we're going to make sure. And uh, here's the first. Here's also the first couple age yeah. group men across awesome. the line. We had Daniel Stubaleski out of the USA. That guy went eight. 50. I think he's out of Illinois, wow. if I'm not mistaken. That guy's really good, Dan Stubleski. And Levi Maxwell. I know is that, that name. Is that Levi yeah, Maxwell? Yeah, the same one. Pro. I mean, it's I think the same he was one. a guy on the scene, and he's really good out of Australia. Wow. 852. So really quick, two top age group guys. 850 for Dan Stubleski as well.